Nicole. Finally sending Nicole her invite. We were supposed to meet almost a half, no, really almost 45 minutes ago, then a half an hour. Then I spilled stuff and then there was stuff in the sky I needed to take pictures of. Okay, the request is sent. Um, I have the camera set up in a different spot than I normally do because I am going to be showing this on um, YouTube and my website. So welcome to my website. This is a meeting with, um, no, my, just so you know, I'm going to be going like up and down, sorry. And my, my camera right here just because the lighting and all sorts of stuff is trying to get it in a good spot. So I'll be going up and down. Sorry about that. But uh, I don't really have it. Oopsie. Huh? <laughs> uh, I won't go too far up and down. Okay, that's way better. Okay, so um, this is a meeting with Nicole. She and I, I got together with her two dogs on Friday. Uh, it was supposed to be morning. It turned into late morning because of technical issues, but we got that figured out and we had a really nice session and um, she's given me updates the last couple of days and I wanted to uh, kind of kill two birds with one stone, which in the sense of follow up with her uh, in real time, face to face, as well as uh, uh, have something to put on the website after somebody has had a healing. She did a healing plus one problem area. We're not going to get into the specifics of that problem area because that's personal, but the problem area, the way that I, I handle problem areas are very similar. Um, everybody's different, but it's, it's getting into, um, uh, how it was for her, really. I, we want to talk about her experience during the session and uh, after these last couple of days. So I've been super excited. I'm going to um, send her a message. Letting her know that we have sent the, the request. It's <laughs> it's 4.42 on August. I've been seeing numbers like just exponentially. She said the same thing, but I've been, um, so we have 4422, so we're almost at 444. See, like, it'll be funny, like, I'll see these, like, oh, it's gonna be that soon, and I'll just, like, okay, and then I, whatever, I do my thing, and it, I'm supposed to look at the clock or the phone or whatever again, um, then I do. And that was cool. It was four, four, three, two, one. I'm not gonna. I have a big television right here with my Roku, and it's a big uh, clock right there. Maybe I can. Birds are outside right now, but they hang out in all these spaces. <laughs> There's 444. <laughs> um, oh, and my. <laughs> it's so funny how my battery percentage will repeat the same numbers that are in the time so often. It's like impossible to set that up. <laughs> I just couldn't even imagine how to set something like that up, but it, um, <laughs> it happens quite frequently. At one point when I have the room and the time, the room, the space in my, in my time frame of doing things to actually post pictures, I have so many pictures of, uh, uh, screenshots of time, and also, uh, turning that on, please, please. Uh, also, aside from times on some of the actual clock and stuff, the seats, big time, <laughs> the seats are a big, big deal. Um, I 
never used to be in Chalice teacher's care about receipts at all. But then I started to get wise to the fact that there's all sorts of numbers and number sequences and codes and stuff on, uh, okay, let's see. So, uh, so now I'm fully into receipts. I always want my receipts and I look at them and often they are um, interesting. Like a seat, like the, the total would be like 1718 or 1515 or 777. Um, my change will be $3.21 or uh, I mean, I have, and I, I keep them now, but I do want to scan them at some point, because, um, <clears throat> what does this one have that's, um, well, there is like a, a sequence of numbers, seven, five, six, eight, so it's like five, six, seven, eight, which is a little out of order on this one um 1716 just like i said uh 1520 so another like jump two three nine eight sequence sequence uh it's like seriously almost if, the, if there's a receipt that doesn't have some kind of like number thing going on i'm like really where is it because there's always something uh, oh, this one was at 9.17.27, and there is definitely a thing with, um, okay, <laughs> the 7.27 as it's 7.27, it's 4.4.7.27, four, seven, seven. um, yeah, 4.4.7.2, four, you know, I, I don't really, I thought I had the 727 thing figured out with that being the lunar eclipse, but it doesn't go away. And then it's just 27 or 72 or 727 or 227. And when I look up all these different things and the significance of the number 27, <laughs> there's so much, I just don't even. So, okay, so we had 1727, so 1727. Um, something 321 also on there. And then I don't even look at the price of this stuff to mean anything because I don't know, people could be like, oh, we'll just put that because it's that much, you know, it's not even how it works. It's more about subtotals, totals, and like other codes, times, and stuff like that on the receipt. Um, so this was a total. My total was 3774 and I really wasn't paying attention to what that meant. And I got $40 cash back. That makes sense, right? I didn't want 20. I wanted 40. So what did it come to? 7774. So three sevens. Um and this was at 1727. It's something 321. There's some code up there. 321. Uh uh, there's like multiple things happening here. I don't count like all, like there's a 980, 98 application, I don't know what that means. 9808 something, but 808, that's the number I see all the time. <gasps> Can you hear me? I had to download it on my phone first. Hey. This is much better than the uh, computer. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like I can hear a lot better. Oh my gosh, that's yeah, much better. I can hear you better too. Normally I have to, and I totally forgot, but normally I have to uh, hook up my Bluetooth speaker to, uh -huh. uh, I'll try to remember to look up here, to because I have like, they're in two different spaces. Uh, just because it's hard to hear, but I think I can hear you pretty well, actually. Yeah, I can hear you very well. Oh, that's good. 
basil mint blueberry water. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, you inspired me. Look what really I have. It's plum and peach. Oh, that sounds really good. Oh, oh my. It's so yeah, good. you've inspired me. I just want to infuse all of my water now. Good. <laughs> it is so good for. I mean, it's good to have regular, just plain water, but. Right. It's really good to like have all the extra goodies in there too, you know. Right. I was just going over receipts because I get a lot of um, codes and receipts. Me too. I, I the other day, um, my receipt it was so weird. Everything I bought started with a six and ended with a six. <laughs> and then the total was like this really weird triple number. It was like a random visit to Trader Joe's, but it was like 676, 696, 616. Ah, okay. And I looked at the receipt. I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> yeah, ever since. Is this bugging you that I'm like looking up? And because if I look up, no. you can see me okay, but then I, I have to look down to see you. So No, I, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, it just bothered me. Like I'm looking at like lighting and background because we're gonna have this video on my website, <laughs> and I was just going. I was like, well, you know, she, she's like, she's been waiting on me, so I'll just, you know, wait on no, her. No, it's fine. So I was I'm, like, I'm looking at receipts. I'm like, so I was talking about numbers and stuff and all that, whatever. Oh, because it turned four forty four as I was like starting this. Oh like, wow. Oh yeah. And I'm not surprised. <laughs> I know. And so I like turned the camera so everybody could see it. I go, I don't usually like wait on a time, but it was like four forty three. I go, you know, it's not like I go, now we know it's coming. We may as well watch it come up on the TV. <laughs> so anyway, let me clean this up. I I'm like super comfy today. I have on t shirt. <laughs> <You look horrible. laughs> I think you look so cute. I love your hair. Hey, so hi. Cool. Hey, hi. Uh, okay, so I was just explaining to the viewers that we're mm -hmm. going to have this on the website and uh, that we had our healing um, with you on Friday and you've been giving me little updates and this was like killing two birds with one stone. One, for us to go over how it was for you and mm -hmm. how it's been for you and to go over whatever we, you may want to discuss. And then um, for me, it helps me out because then it gives people something to reference for themselves. Right. And, you know, we did your your pets too. So right. we're going to talk about them as well. So, <laughs> so yeah. So um, I wanted to just kind of let you Free flow. Let me turn off my um, This guy, this one person, I swear, I, we just have the worst luck in trying to communicate. It's like, I'm sorry, it's just not supposed to happen. But... <laughs> okay, I did that. That should be quiet now. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So I just want you to free flow, but at some point, I want us to kind of, not in too much detail, but I kind of want us to go over. Um, like the different stages that mm -hmm. we pinpoint in the that I talk about in my website about the healing, the clearing, the going through the chakras, and then the infusion. And I talked about how you had the one problem area. And we're not going to go into details about it, but we want to talk. I want to talk about how that was for you. So at some mm -hmm. point, I want to kind of get there. To, you know, that's kind of like what I'd like to go over. And then, okay. of course, how it's been since then. So, but we can start wherever you want. I'm just okay. excited to see you. And it's been so great to see uh, your messages have just been so amazing. You're just like, Wah! like happy. <laughs> and I can feel your energy. I haven't seen you since the healing. So, yeah. you know, I can feel your energy through, through there and how, it's, how just like light and airy and happy and just online you are and kind of all this stuff coming up and you're talking about how you're like tell, you know, channeling your, your telepath with your mom yeah. and doing that whole thing. And then next so, time, Really weird. It's been so cool to hear about these little snippets. So tell me, what's like, what's it been? So before the session, um, you know, like I had yeah. a little anxiety, and you know, I was just really searching for because, like, sometimes we 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 know that we need healing, or we know that we need to clear some things out. We just don't really know how or where to start. Yeah. And for me, you know, I meditate and things like that, but it just 
I feel like I needed something deeper, which is why I truly believe like the universe brought me to you because what are the odds that I would find you and you're in California and you do remote healing and it was so personal, even though you weren't physically here. Yeah. Um, so that day, that morning, well, the night before I did like a small little, um, like a video, just kind of oh, sort of cool. talking about how I felt and just to see myself in that element before the healing. That's so, so, so good. Right. And so the next morning when I woke up, I wasn't anxious. I wasn't nervous. I was like thrilled. I was ready. Like I cleaned my house and like everything needs to be perfect. She's going to call me at this time. And I just, <laughs> I, I was really excited. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so divine timing. It worked out perfectly. But um, it was just, it, it felt like something I truly needed to do. It felt like a destined part of my journey to really kickstart this new path that I'm on. Um, my boys are playing, so if you hear them, that's Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> but, um, and the so timing we, of it, too. So it, yes. it, it, the date was the, was it, it was the 16th? We did it on this. Was it Friday? Friday? <laughs> My dates are horrible. I know. Oh, <laughs> I'm such bliss. Um, let's see. We did it. We did it on the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Okay. Yes. Nice. So it was the day before the eight gate, which was pretty. Yes. That's pretty that's divine. What it, was. it was the day before. I was like, "This is beautiful timing for you." Yes. You're just getting. It's just so good. So, right. Yeah. And remember you asked you're like, do you want to like do your session soon? Like now or when would be best? And without even realizing like the eight gate and the timing yeah. I felt like that day was perfect. Yeah. I'm like it needs to happen on this day. That's so perfect. when we started the session, I remember I told you I started to feel sleepy. Yes. It was like just you're talking. It was calming. It was like putting me in a trance, but I was still like alert. Yeah. I was just starting to feel really sleepy, more like well, whatever wow. worries I had, they were just slowly melting away before we even truly started the session. Um, and then um, I talked not about a lot of things that I think had been a part of your consciousness and mm -hmm. that you've been dealing with and, you know, just how it is to be like, shared, you know, stuff about my own, you know, journey and how it can be to be an empath around people. And when you're yeah. in timelines and I mean, just like all this stuff that we feel very, we can feel so isolated and alone in and, um, a lot of us have these similar stories and yeah. then when we're getting into this space of like going yeah and now i want to be done with all that i'm so ready like what you're talking about like we've got yeah. the squeeze and all that and mm -hmm. and um uh, so i think that that just got you in a place where you were just like oh my god this is just like like when you're sleeping, you want to get in bed and you just see the perfect bed. You're like, oh, this is exactly what I wanted, you know, kind right. of thing. It was like, and, and I could see that happening with you. I could just see your eyes and I was like, oh yeah, she's getting ready. We're about to get going now. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead. So when the session first started, um, like when we, we basically, we talked about relaxing and then, you know, we called in my spirit tribe and Mother Gaia. That is when I really started to feel like super relaxed. Like I can't really describe the feeling, but you know, I pick up on energies and I could definitely feel the energies present. Oh yeah. Um, and so even though I was there and I was home and I was alone, the moment we called in Gaia and my spirit tribe and, and we started the session is when I felt like chills over me. Um, and they weren't like freaking or anything like that do you get tingly? yes yeah it was very tingly yeah. um and warm so yeah. you know that feeling like I, it's hard to explain but just like something comes over you oh, yeah. that's truly really what i felt and it was very <laughs> strong and very yeah. powerful yeah and for me that was just the sign that it's okay it's yeah. time now relax everything's going to be okay you're safe you're mm -hmm. protected mm -hmm. um and so when we got into the session and you started going through my chakras i, I know he's crazy he's, so <laughs> he's hyper right now he's so, um he's like <laughs> a big burst of energy um <laughs> after we got past like the root chakra and we started talking you know clearing out the solar plexus is when i really started to feel like sleepy um and so a couple of times i was out of it but i was still there Oh, yeah. Kind of like an outer body experience. So I was like falling asleep, but I could hear you still in my background. And then I'd wake up like, we're still here. Okay, everything's fine. But it was literally moments I'd go in and out of sleep, in and out of sleep. But I was 
feel conscious. I was still aware. It's like I could hear you in that sleep. Yeah. So for me, that was like a very deep meditative state that I was yeah. able to get into. Good. Um, and you were right. Laying flat yeah. on the bed yeah. was like perfect. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being propped up and then yeah. feeling that experience. Yeah. So yeah, laying flat on the bed was perfect. And then being in the comfort of my own home made it even easier. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, there've been times I've, I've had small chakra clearing sessions in other places and sometimes it's hard to relax on that massage bed or whatever they're using. Yeah. And so this for me, was like, it was perfect. It was personal, mm -hmm. it was intimate. Um, but I do remember that going in and out of sleep. Um, and then when you were talking and you were having me envision the colors flowing, reaching the ground, grounding me or, you know, um, to earth, I could truly envision these things. It was oh, like, yeah. uh, how can I explain it? Like <laughs> cartoon characters, when they're envisioning and colors are coming from your face and yeah. they go wherever you want them to go. Yeah. I was literally envisioning the color leaving my body, going to the, the ground, meeting Gaia, and then coming back to me. Yeah. And also I was having visions of what Gaia looked like oh. without ever even doing any research. Yeah. Um, and I just envisioned like this beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. um, and she just had like each color lighting up in the chakras. Um, she was a, just a very bland color. Um, and I was envisioning someone very nurturing. Um, she didn't have on any clothes. She was like one with nature. Um, and whatever she did have on, they were like uh, vines and, and leaves. And she, I just envisioned this really natural, something out of like Avatar, something similar to that. Um, and then I was having visions in certain moments where I was kind of like in a forest, but not really, mm -hmm. but I was with her. And you're right. She was cradling me. I was in her lap. So she was obviously much larger than me, but still very feminine. Um, she was basically just like a large woman, just mm -hmm. big, like an avatar. Mm -hmm. um, so I was envisioning these things as we were going through each chakra. And the closer we got to like my third eye and then to the crown, I truly started to feel grounded. And whatever I felt before that session, I do not feel. Any fear that I had has left and I'm sure you can tell I've been like a maniac on Instagram But and I've always been that person. It's yeah. just there there are days where I couldn't tap into that feeling yeah. Or there were days where I would feel things not realizing they were other energies I was picking up so this That's session good. truly helped me to understand in conjunction with our conversations that a lot of these things were just energies I was picking up on Mm -hmm. and other people's emotions that I was soaking in, which is not a bad thing, but I wasn't aware. And so it'll so really confuse you. you. Where, if you don't know where <laughs> your baseline is, it is really hard mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. what's not yours because exactly. you never learned your own baseline because you came out bringing in every, you know what I mean? You've always been doing this. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I tell people it's just it's a complete like transformation in the sense that you really get in line with you know with your higher self, with your soul self, with your spiritual like all that stuff just kinda you go from this to to that, you know, it's like right. the best kind of visual without, you know, equipment right. I can use because you are um like fractured and um you're just vibing just all out of whack and yeah things. so when you clear that out you're like oh there i am that's how i felt yeah yeah that's how i felt when i did when they told me how to do myself almost mm -hmm. six years ago and and i dropped all that energy that had me so sick and I was like, there it is. I feel so weak. <laughs> I feel so airy. I feel like, oh my God. Like, like I've had little pokes and, and like that. It's been able to come out at times, you know, sometimes for larger chunks, sometimes for smaller chunks. But to sustain it has been impossible in my life. And I've always, it's either been one thing or another. So then when you, when you get online with that, it's like, holy moly, it's energizing. It's like, <laughs> right? Is that a good way to put it? I, um, what I can say is like, regardless if, if I have a moment where I feel sad, yeah. happy, anxious, confused, agitated, they feel like my true organic emotions now. Yeah. So I can really identify, okay, this is how I'm really feeling. 
like remember I told you on um, eight gate, I could feel that energy so heavy. Yeah. Like there were moments I was agitated and I'm like, Arr! and then there were moments where I was light and feathery and dancing around the house. And I was just back and forth, back and forth. But I, I could truly say, even though it was a, you know, a universal energy that I was feeling, I was still very much in tune with my own emotions. Um, I even wrote a little bit in my journal about that, but, um, it is significant we did it the day before the eight gate because I didn't even know that that was happening. You mean, um, and, you mean 18, 18? Yeah, like eight, yeah. 18, yeah. 18. Yeah. Um, I just didn't even. That day too, I was like, oh, yeah, I was flat on this couch to literally like three o'clock. I finally you said it moved, it. like you didn't want to get up. I will. I mean, I got up here. Of course I got up, but it would be like, okay, I'm right back down. And the most I'd, I'd be like, okay, I need to sleep. And I'd like get inspired to like do something on Instagram or, you know, right. mess with a photo or something, you know, be creative. And then like, I mean, I would, but it was heavy, but at the same time, just like you, I'm like, I know where my, I'm where I know what is all going out on here because it's that mm -hmm. heavy on me, right. but it's not me. I'm just right. anchoring for, for other people. That's really if we're that type of light worker where we're helping the people who haven't been cleared out who are right. online and getting you know exponentially more and more online and as we do that it's kind of like okay well we clear our own stuff out so we, we can be as high vibe as possible for the whole environment around us and all of you know everybody on Gaia including the animal kingdom including the insect kingdom including the the nature like every single energetic being on Gaia is feeling it because we're right. all doing it at the same yeah. time and that's some heavy shit that we're doing yeah and <laughs> so for some of us we're just going damn you know other people just fight with other people or they get sick or they get a stomach virus or a flu you know what I mean like people mm -hmm. just kind of you know deal with that energy in different ways and I have no idea what's going on for the most part but um, that's really great to hear that because that is, you know, the, the feeling, you know, knowing what's yours and what's not, because mm -hmm. that is to me, the absolute foundation to being a healthy empath is mm -hmm. knowing your authenticity in any given whatever, because right. As we've grown up, whether we're 23 or 39, like I was when I learned I was an empath and then still continue to tr figure out what that meant. And right. then eventually what a physical empath was and then being a healer empath and all that stuff. But it is so important for your own sanity and peace of mind, because I can't tell you how many of us have gone through big chunks of time where we're just like, screw it. I just want to yeah. here because this, this life sucks and there's no good, there's nothing good about it. Right. This sucks. <laughs> and, and when you, and it's like, I know I totally get that, but that's only because you don't know your own power and really right. who you even are in there and what's going on. And once you do, it's a whole new world. Mm -hmm. a whole new world and you're like superhuman finally figuring it out you've taken mm -hmm. off the kryptonite necklace and you go oh my god I'm actually strong and I can you know what I mean like I'm not handicapped because you feel kind of handicapped your whole life yeah. well, I mean I did I mean I had a full-on physical thing going on aside from that I felt handicapped because so much didn't make sense you know it's like right. I knew so much and at the same time it it was just you know what I mean it's very it wasn't funny. making sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I was feeling yeah um, and the funny thing is um I kind of I've always had that feeling that I was empathic and but after this session if I wasn't sure I'm sure now mm -hmm. um and I'm definitely sure of my purpose um, and I don't know exactly what that soul mission looks like, you know, because right. life workers, we, we do all types of different things. Yeah, different oh yeah, things. and it's evolving. But I just feel like this was the kickstart. Like this truly said, this is who you are. This is why you've come to this point mm -hmm. and you have reached the point to where you needed to heal from these things. So now that you can show others how to live in their own freedom, to live in their own truth. That's yeah. what I feel like now. Like I'm living in my own truth. 
Yes. Um, and I know each day I'm going to learn more about myself because I already have been noticing things about me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, just little small little things about what I like, what I truly don't like. Um, oh, so what I want my life to even look like. Like re basically I've recreated my reality of what I want it to be like. Um, all of the things I thought I wanted, a, you know, a week ago, they're not the same. Um, how I envision my life to look, it's not even the same. I'm kind of just going with the flow now. <laughs> And it feels better that way. It doesn't feel like there's that pressure. Um, there, it doesn't feel like there's that confusion of what your life has to be like. Um, I don't feel that anymore, that confusion that I felt. I was very confused about a lot of things. Like you said, the pressure, doing all these things. The yeah. pressure of not having it all figured out while you don't exactly. know how you feel about what's going on. It feels like, a, it feels like an impossible thing to even think about having a, a really functional, happy life with anybody. Mm -hmm. I know that's how I felt, yeah. you know, because you can't, you're just like, you know what? I just feel broken. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I was very physically ill up and down and stuff. And to me, I was just like, that just sucks for people, you know, to be, to not know what's going on. Yeah. And, and it was, more, it was more about that, but that just it permeated every single corner. There wasn't a spot in my life where that didn't And, um, none of it was good. Right. <laughs> uh, none of it was good. And, and, um, but now, and since I have that all figured out, it's like, I tell people I live the most a magical life. It's just amazing to me to go from my reality and not knowing who I was authentically. I was somebody sick in bed, seeing specialists all the time and taking medication every day in and out of disability over the course of almost two decades, not feeling well since I was a child. And now I not only am all good and I feel better and that's all great and stuff, but there is a purpose to all of that. And that is so I can understand what other people feel like mm -hmm. because I've either felt it or I can feel it in the moment or both. Yeah. And not only that, I can make them feel better and I can help them with their energy because I'm so energetically sensitive. And to me, that's just like, so absolutely magical, you know, that I have this arc, you know, and I, and there's so much left to go. Like, I know that I figured it out to this point, but I have no idea where that will go from, from here. You know, mm -hmm. I know that I'm just addicted to this. Yeah. I'm so addicted to this, this reaction that I get this. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I feel amazing. I yeah. felt like this. I don't know what this is just, ah, like, yeah, <laughs> because literally. that's what it's like. It's like a birth and a birthday and New Year's and Christmas and everybody's mm -hmm. just like so excited because you're finally like, oh, this is what it's like to be me and not yeah. have the other stuff attached to it. Right. 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 Literally. That's how I felt. <laughs> that's how I feel right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, there's, and there's a faith and a hope and a happiness and a blissfulness and an excitement for the future, even if you don't know what's coming. And that's like right. almost the most exciting part about it. You're like, well, let's, let's get, you know, it's like, how's this going to go? Because right. up till now and this whole thing evolving and just kind of blooming in this moment that you're in right now mm -hmm. is so special and exciting in itself that you can see like the hazy horizon of like, that glitter world, even mm -hmm. though you can't see the details, you know, right. I know a magical, you know, life is in store for me. I just, you know, we're going to color in all the details as we go. That's how I see it. Right. You know? I like to project just a kind of sweeping feeling over a situation or the future or whatever, and kind of envision mm -hmm. certain things it's for certain manifesting. You want to be specific, Right. But then to me, it's like, you also have to be so open in what comes and, and set also, as you come into who you are, set yourself aside so you can get that divine information and follow those little pieces, those little clues and tidbits and what I call going down the rabbit hole 
because mm -hmm. you'll get a little message or information about yourself or your life or a situation or a, you'll see a painting or hear a song and it'll trigger something and you'll go oh my gosh you'll and it's just meant to do that and you just start unraveling what it's meant and everybody's an individual i am trying to have a framework there to help people kind of you know, if this is where you're, you know, trigger, go here. This will help if you, this is where you're triggered. Cause I've been through all that. I had, I was just like literally a, a, in a, like a blind person in a maze, like try, you know, just like a lot of us have been. And, and it's just each, you know, I think person kind of doing that, just, we're trying so much so hard to make it easier and better and healthier for other people as they come up because we see right. how important it is. Like yes. you have this pool, like where she so okay, so I don't want to keep going on. I want to keep talking on. Tell me, okay, so this whole thing with being, you know, online and, and authentic feeling yourself and being authentic and mm -hmm. you're talking about um the feeling is different from before because you were confused and all this and now you don't know, but it doesn't matter. Or right? Yeah. yeah? The old me, um, on top of just being a very anal person, like things need to work out this way. And it's only that, and that just comes from like childhood and the past and really just having to be so independent at a young age to where this has allowed me to stop and say, hey, you're only 23. <laughs> Everything does not need to be figured out. But before the session, um, I, I would think so far ahead in the future, I gave myself anxiety, like yeah. insane anxiety. Like I'm thinking about things that I don't even have reached yet, you know, yeah. and it's like, you know, and I'm, I'm feeling like the only way to stay ahead is when you just think that far ahead. But really I was giving myself anxiety and not being present in the moment. Yeah. I feel present in my moment and the old me, cause I have to, I refer to her as the old me cause I'm literally not the same person. Um, <laughs> the old me, I do with, <laughs> yeah in the yeah. same body but not the same feelings yeah. and you know I think you know just it's a free flow of energy now but um the old me would just panic about every single thing to the the most minute details and now like you said I don't really know where I'm going what it looks like but I am okay with that it's like I have a sense of trust. I trust the universe. I trust my angels. I trust my spirit tribe. I trust myself. And I trust the people that I come into contact with that are helping me get to this point. I just, I, I have a bigger sense of trust. And before then, I, I didn't have trust. Even I, I, if you really think about it, I didn't even trust myself because I second guess myself all the time. I second guess my intuition all the time. Now I can just kind of look at things. I'm like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I don't even overthink it. I'm like, it's either this is what it is or this is what it's not. I don't try to find anything that's not there. That's not physically or energetically or mentally or emotionally. I don't try to make anything out of anything now. I'm You're not going back in your dark. story and pulling no. out files to see what no. goes to the scene. No, I don't even have that time anymore. <laughs> I don't Good. have the energy to do it that way anymore. Um, because with this new refreshed feeling, it's like now my energy is reserved. I want to use it for what's important, for what right. matters. The anxiety, it just, it doesn't deserve the energy. It no longer serves me. And I truly feel that. And I understand what that means when we say it no longer serves us. It's like your time is up. Yeah. That anxiety that you used to have, she has to go because it wasn't helping me. It was hurting me. It was feeding into my physical problems, my emotional, my mental. It was like birthing all of these problems that really didn't even exist. And so understanding that now, I don't, I don't even try to think that far ahead. I wake up each day. I do my rituals. I meditate and I'm like, we'll just go with the flow. However, the day falls is how it falls. Um, there have been a few things that haven't worked out, but I don't even see them that way. I see them as they weren't meant to be. Right. They just weren't meant to be. The timing either isn't right or it's just not meant to happen. Um, and, and I'm okay with that. Whereas in the past, if it wasn't working out, I'm forcing it or I'm finding ways, how can I make it work? Or I'm blaming myself for this person or that situation. And I just don't feel that way anymore. I don't, I don't give it that energy. I'm perfectly okay with saying I'm going to go with the flow. That is the vibes I'm on right now, going with the flow. And I truly can feel it. Everything's flowing. And because I stopped giving it that energy and that attention, things are actually falling into place. So I, 
Oh. Yeah, when you get out of the way, when you stop resisting and like needing the control, when you've decided this is how it needs to be, you're you're eliminating so many possible other outcomes, and you're making it really hard energetically. <laughs> At the same time, if you don't know how you feel about stuff, it makes all of that even worse, you know. Right. Um, so knowing how you feel about stuff and then things quote unquote don't work out, you're like, all right, whatever, you know, like there's okay. going to be something there and either I'll know about it now or later or never, but it, it is what it is and you're not putting, you're not, that's not a time and energy stuff in one way or another. Right. As long as you're, as long as you're maintaining your boundaries and you know, you know, your, your own energy and your, you know, people can flow all over the place, but you have to maintain. And that's when it gets like, when you start feeling energy so well and other people, that almost becomes the trickier thing than, than yeah. ever um, yeah. is wanting to help, wanting to be there, being open, going with the flow, but having your boundaries, knowing who's just using you. Right. Mm -hmm. For that, to extrapolate that from you. And the higher vibe you get, you have these big swings and people coming in for various reasons, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really kind of discerning and categorizing. I hate to put it that way, but it, it kind of is, you know, yeah. it just is. And, and that's, that can be difficult. That, mm -hmm. that can be really difficult because we kind of innately want to turn ourselves inside out for mm -hmm. anything and anybody to right. make, make that better or them better or whatever. But we didn't get the, to this point in, without learning the lesson how and what a detriment that is to us and the entire mm -hmm. plan, if you will, in general. So, so we have to see that coming. We have to, you know, and when we start getting more in line with all of this stuff, we will have that intuition at that time that like getting feelings about stuff and kind of already seeing it before it's happened yeah. just kind of working with that and figuring all that out is like is probably the the trick I would say yeah I think once you understand who you are that's when it it's just like okay so everything I've been through makes sense but now, yeah. like you said, there's that discernment and, and understanding the importance of reserving it now, um, not allowing people to freely leech on this energy, um, you know, truly reserving it for the best purpose and for what yeah. will serve me and others, you know, for a higher purpose. Right. But um, I definitely can feel that um, just randomly in public, people have been gravitating towards me. And it's always been that way. Um, yeah. it, when I go to crystal shops and people will just ask questions and I'm like, I don't know everything, but I can help, you know? Yeah. And I think it's just them feeling that energy gravitating towards me. Oh, yeah. uh, but even now more than ever, um, I, I can't go in the grocery store everywhere I go in public. Someone talks to me, so they'll either stop me or they'll just try to have random conversation. I know. I know. And this is, and, and, and it's wonderful because they, you know, them, they're feeling your energy, their guides are pointing, you know, they're like, Oh, there's one. Here you go. You need that. You know? And you're like, so, but there are times in your life where you need to not, you're in a rush you mm -hmm. have a mood. You have some place to be like, you can't just stop and have the random conversation with somebody for 15, 20 minutes because they need that, you know? Right. Um, so if you're in that mode, the trick is no eye contact. Okay. Just don't make eye contact with anybody. Okay. And I definitely you lock eyes. their eyes. I know <laughs> it's like your souls are connecting. You have agreed to this now. You're right about that. You're very right. <laughs> Yeah, you can just like, hey, you know, kind of, you know, acknowledge that people are there. Don't make eye contact, you know, don't, don't engage energetically. If you got some place to be, if you're in a mood, you're in your own, like, yeah, you're just cannot take anybody else's right now. And then, you know, you might feel that way and you can 
shift. You might go into some place, somebody might come and you just might go, okay, now I need that. Now yeah. I might be the one who's, you know, who's the person and decides, oh, that might, you know, and then we can, I know when I inadvertently meet an empath because I'll find myself with the verbal diarrhea, just like other people do to me. <laughs> How we talk for hours on the phone. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm like, oh my God, you're a verbal I'm diarrhea. Like, that's like one of the best, that's like, because I don't do that to the normals. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> we do that to each other. <laughs> but we, a lot of times we don't know that we're doing that to each other. So right. What's so great is like the more that we understand that that's what we are and that's what we're doing, we can, you know, kind of take care of each other better that way. I think it's just right. Like, I agree with that. That's so great that it's happening though, because that's like the point of who you are. Mm -hmm. But now I'm able to like really see like who really needs me right now and who doesn't, you know, who, who really just wants to talk and dig in and pull, like you say, or who truly needs this five to 10 minutes that could possibly just shift their entire day or their yeah. life. Yeah. Um, and I'm starting to become more sensitive to that energy. Whereas I'm just holding on to everything, soaking in everything. Now I, I can categorize it better. I truly feel like I know how to separate and sift through now. And um, sometimes it's just going to be you being happy, you. Yeah. It's just going to be somebody just sharing space with you, talking about the shoes that are for sale and just feeling and feeling your energy. And it has nothing to do with their life or your life or who you are or what they are. It's just this like, you know, thing. And that in itself could be it, you know? So just, uh, you know, that's another part of why it's so great just to kind of try to ride the flow of being authentic as much as you possibly can because hopefully any given moment you're in that space, you know, and you don't have those feelings of looking back going, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why didn't I do that? This is how I felt. Why did I get this talking about all, you know, that's when we don't know what's what or who's who or what, right. you know what I mean? Where we're just like, how do we feel about that? Yeah. All over the place. <laughs> so absorbent to <laughs> other people's energy. As we're feeling our own, it's like, that's how narcissists can really work and get into the, the, the uh, um, energy of an empath yeah. mm -hmm. because they're really good at kind of working this way and flipping and going back and forth and all that. But, um, okay, so what else? Um, so people are coming up to you and talking to you. Okay, so you said you on text you've mentioned your dreams. Yeah, my dreams have been insane. Like, I always had really good dream recall. I even That's have awesome. a dream journal where I, if I can, sometimes they're so deep and weird. I, the moment I, I wake up, if I don't write within a minute to two minutes, I'm forgetting it all because it was just so confusing. But I feel like the ones that are like absolutely significant that I must remember, I have at least that 10, 20, 30 minutes sometimes to write everything I can down. And usually it's just when I'm, I'm just scribbling. I don't even care what it looks like just to get it out of my brain. Um, but lately, they feel been... like do audio, like talk about it. I probably should. That's a really good idea. Just do audio. Probably getting like a little tape recorder. That's a really good idea. On your phone. On my phone? Yeah. it's a I forget I have an iPhone. Yeah. Smart. I forget. <laughs> with a voice recorder, and you can also download. Voice a really good idea. Okay, I'm gonna take that. Yeah. I do that. Like I'll be like, I'll start getting info or whatever. I'm, I'm still trying. I know about. I know I'm dreaming. I know I'm busy in my dream state. I'm still trying to. I'm not great at that. Mm. So, um, but anyway, really um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Audio for um just my own when I'm I'm totally awake and I'm awake doing my business with them so, yeah so that way you can just you know kind of close your eyes and just get back into like the visual behind your eyes and not be writing and just talk yeah if you want to write it as like transcribe it later that might uh -huh. boost it and help you more okay so at least you have it documented you know okay that's because a really good idea it is hard to write and keep up yeah yeah. Some mornings my brain just has a fart. It's like, you just woke up from this dream. Why can't you remember? So I'm really going to try that and I'll let you know how that's going, which I'm sure it's going to go great. Just like stay in bed and try to keep it. Like put it on your, put it on your, 
screen or whatever and just make it easy for you to find on your phone while you're good idea it. so you're okay. not like changing positions with your brain or your head or, you know what i mean just try to right. make a habit of doing that it's, i mean i would if i was that good at it that's amazing right. because <laughs> there's so much knowledge in there that yes. so many juicy details in yes. that screen. <laughs> that it's amazing that you can recall them like that well. So yeah, that's awesome. And some of them, I truly like immediately, I'll know the message behind it. See, before then I took like the literal dream. So if the dream is me falling off a cliff, I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, don't go near any cliffs. Not really looking deeper into the message. <laughs> so if there's something going on in my life at the moment and then I dream something like that, I understand that that is a message to either not do something or to be weary or to be cautious or that this could all fall down if you did. Like I now can look deeper into the message. But after our session, um, it's usually what I'm thinking about. I'll just receive the answer in my dream. And like I said, you have to look deeper into the actual what's happening in the dream because it won't make sense. You know, one minute I'm in this segment of the dream and then I'm with a random person and then there's someone I've known years ago in the dream and it's like confusing. But if you really dissect it and I look into it, then I, I start to understand what it really means. And then I just take heed from that. Um, but that is one thing I noticed. My dreams are a lot more vivid. Um, I also like to drink like teas, like blue lotus and things like that to help me have better dreams too. Oh, um, but I do truly believe. Maybe um, and I I <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me about that. I should do that. And no, it's awesome. I, I want to master my dreams, like it's astral projection. I, I know I'm so supremely busy in dream state. And I also, because I've also been like, come on, can I just remember a little bit more? You know, I wake up at these times, like I did today, 222. Like I was like, serious. like it happens a lot. And I know that's supposed to trigger something. I know I have an overall feeling. And, and then I'm kind of told, like, you know, you'll remember when you're supposed to remember. Yeah. You'll, you know, it's not that, I'm, the, the point is, is that your subconscious knows, your soul level knows, your body knows, everything, you know, your consciousness can only handle so much. Right. And it's kind of overloaded. <laughs> you know, you, you, and you, and I'm like, that's true. So if you don't remember your dreams and all your awake stuff too, then, you know, they kind of like, but still I'm like, oh, I kind of, I do want, you know, more. But anyway, you could tell me like what it is that, that you take for that and, um. Yeah, I can definitely tell you, um, there's, there's a few, um, things I'll send you and show you, but I do know Blue Lotus is one of my favorite to, to steep okay. drink before bed. And I already have wild dreams. So I think instead of allowing them to freak me out, like they used to, I've accepted them. And now I actually, most of the time I'm excited to dream. I'm excited to go to sleep because they now, just let me ask so you, have you experienced what is known as either nightmares or night terrors? Or yes. Okay, so you've had the, the situation where things are very normal in your dreams, like almost like just living time and nothing is too fantastical, it's just kind of normal, but then it starts turning and twisting into yes. like that. I and had one recently. Um, okay. I wouldn't call it a nightmare, but it did wake me up out of my sleep, um, and then I went right back to sleep because I, I didn't have that feeling over me, but it, I can't really explain all of it, but what I do remember significantly, um, and it, it might not have been a nightmare, but it felt so real, it freaked me out. Yeah. There were hands, there were a set of two hands in my dream. And these hands, they were like big, lighter complexion, kind of rough, like someone old age wisdom. Um, and I prayed to my- Good or not? Huh? So how did it feel, good or not? Um, It, it wasn't like a- it didn't feel like anything evil, but it didn't feel like anything like nice either. Like I was in the dream and I just remember the hands were around my neck, but they weren't choking me. They were just around my neck and not even like crossways this way. Right. And, but in my sleep, I wake up and I swear to you, I, I could feel the hands in my actual physical. And so I woke up and I go, okay, so let me start you. Right and it's giving me chill bumps because I feel like I felt those hands. Okay, so, okay, so here's the deal. Don't freak out or too bad, but okay. what I came to understand, and okay, so let me take you back a little ways and give you some context. The reason, one of the reasons why I don't remember and haven't remembered my dreams since I was about 25, 26, somewhere in there, was because I had such 
horrible night terror. Every time I would sleep, not only would I have these super vivid dreams that felt like normal wake state, just like being at home, talking to somebody, and then like all of a sudden things would just start to turn bad. Yeah. And just keep, and just creating more either fear or anger, usually fear in mm -hmm. some way for myself, for other people. So it's very, and the reason why they're called night terrors is because they're so real feeling. Yeah. Prince, no. And um, so I went to my doctor back then and I was like, you got to help me, man. Like I'm exhausted yeah. every single day. I wake up being exhausted and I can't live this way. I work full time. I have a child. You know, like, what am I supposed yeah. to do? And he's like, I'm sorry. I just don't believe in like sleep, you know, paint or whatever. Um, sleep bed you know like sleep mode. sleeping medication and, and i was like oh he's like you're just gonna have to he's like i don't know i'm like i can't like so he didn't i basically told myself i was not i'm like i know i'm gonna be dreaming i just don't want to i don't want to remember i don't want to remember my dreams i don't want to if i wake up tired so be it i don't want to remember what happens because i can't be awake all night in my head you know, like it was entered, it, and I know for a fact that led to me and my symptoms of phys my physical symptoms because it was draining me energetically at night. I like that's when you're supposed to be restoring your, your yeah. body and your energy, and it, you can't do that if you're in this complete effed up place when you're supposed to be doing that. It's completely right. counterproductive. So fast forward to, okay, spiritual awakening after Kundalini's and all this <laughs> stuff happens and it's like, oh, dream. And I'm like, blank, black, just black mm -hmm. nothingness. And I'm like, why is that? Why is that? And it's like, well, remember what happened and why you did this? Like I basically just told myself, I'm done with this. Yeah. And I, I don't want to remember my dreams. So, you know. <laughs> That's what it worked. And um, which at the time I found really kind of weird, but I, I was just happy about it. Yeah. I didn't read too much into it. Um, so then I'm told, okay, so here's the deal with the, all of that. If you can take into account how some of us are very aware that as light bodies, we're targets for negative energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're targets for negative energy when we sleep too. And there are certain negative energies that live in the lower dimensions of, um, of the ethers when you first go into dream state before you rise up and get astral, mm. they can take you there and full on just distract you before you even have a chance to get past that. They're making, they're throwing all sorts of imagery at you. They're getting into your space. They're messing with your head. They're keeping you energetically exhausted and you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. like, you see how this is like connected? Yeah. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? It makes and a lot of sense. Like, oh no, this is the thing. And there's actually, like, there's like, this, like, I saw videos I know or read, I can't remember over the years. I've seen so many different things, but it's been confirmed on different levels that what can very easily happen is, and it happens more as you're low, as you are dealing with lower vibrational energies in and around you, you're more susceptible to that. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm not dealing with that now. Um, I just kind of shoot past it. I'm just still not remembering everything, but, um, but I do know that that's not a hundred percent. And sometimes I, I, I think that it does happen. I think sometimes it happens when, you know, as much as we try to shield off our space and, and whatever, you know, things seep through. Yeah. So it's important to, um, because I haven't, and I know that i that's not a part of my, if it was, I couldn't do healing. You know what I mean? So I know that that's not it because that, that's just way too low vibe. It's just, it's so exhausting that I just can't. <laughs> um, but if you, if you're, if you are still experiencing that, if that's coming up, it, it makes sense because you're kind of, um, 
I don't know. You kind of have the little bell over your head right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? you and it was only that one, but it, it didn't surprise me. I kind of expected it. Um, I like, if I can count on my hand, how many experiences I've had in my dreams that woke me up and I was like scared shitless. It was only two. Oh, one what? of them, one of them, no one will believe me, but I was pre like astral projected from my bed. And then I like, I came back down and I tried to yell for my younger brother and I, nothing would come out. I couldn't yell for, for his name. I wanted to go fill up just for someone to come in the room with me because I was freaked out. Um, and th this was like years ago before I even started to really know like who I was and you know, what my abilities were and, and my energy in general. Yeah. Um, and that really freaked me out with this one freaked me out, but I didn't let it consume me. I immediately, I woke up, I turned on angel music. I went right back to bed and I was perfectly fine, but it, it did feel like very real. And those hands were rough and unattractive. And I even told it to my friend. I'm like, it, it just, it was weird. They were around my neck and they weren't trying to literally strangle me. Um, or at least they didn't get to that point yet, but it was just the, the the idea of it and I ripped the hands apart and then I woke up and so that was the only thing I've experienced since then that was like okay wow but my dreams um besides that one they have, they've been amazing <laughs> they've been crazy some of them have been like supernatural um and some of them also have been messages about some of like the relationships I've been wanting to end just really confirming that I've made the right choice mm, and things like that, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and well, just, you were saying how like you'll have a question and you'll wake up knowing that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. I, yes. I started doing yeah. that way, but I was like, you know what? If I can't figure something out, I'll just decide I need to have the answer when I wake up. And yeah. then I, this was years ago. And I was like, oh my God. It worked. So like, I didn't know what, what yeah. I was doing or what was happening. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of how it was. Yeah. yeah. I'll even pray and ask them to show yeah. me in my dreams what I need to know. If I can't get it in this world, show me in the dream world, please. Because I get it. There's a lot going on energetically. So if you can make it to where I can remember, make it make sense, or at least where I can dissect it. And they, yeah. they always come through for me. They always will show me in some way what I need to know in the right time too. Um, so yeah, the dreams have gotten really colorful. There was even one um, night. It was actually the night of 8, 18, 18. Mm -hmm. I took my sleepy tea, um, which is like, it's a mixture of a bunch of herbs that are supposed to help you, you know, lucid dream. It's like this really crafty tea that I bought from an online website. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> cause I'm like obsessed now. I, I, I want to master my dreams. I want to truly understand what it means to connect with the dream world. And so I yeah, drank back in the day I used to lucid dream and then I'm like, well, I can't like say, yes, I lucid dream. And then sometimes I'm in night terror and then yeah. you know, I just shut it all down, you know, but to yeah. lucid dream is so bitching. Oh. You there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Someone called. I had to find it really quick. <laughs> Even yeah. though my phone is on do not disturb. I see. I told you it doesn't, oh, yeah. it doesn't work. That's okay. I, yeah. But, um, so yeah. And then the most significant thing for me, which has made me feel just amazing is my angel numbers. Mm. And you already know, cause I've been telling you, but yeah. before then I would get the ring in my ear. I would look at the time. I would get messages that were very relevant at the time. But now when I tell you like numbers are following me, they're everywhere. <laughs> I see them in the most significant places that you wouldn't even imagine, you know? And I'm like, wow, this is, this is getting deeper they're truly connecting with me more. It's like that day we established the fundaments of our relationship. That day they realized, okay, she's ready to receive. She's ready for us. She's open. She's yeah. taking the necessary steps to heal. Meaning now we're ready to show her a more elevated level where we just rang in her ear maybe once or twice a day. Now it's like everywhere I look <laughs> on license plates, receipts, um, the TV, pay pieces of paper, sometimes randomly outside. I've been finding white feathers all over the place. I pick them up and I just keep going, but I truly feel more connected than I ever have with my angels and my spirit tribe. And I just, I feel connected. That's the best way to describe it. Wow. I feel we have that relationship now. Yeah. Whereas before I might've dibbled and dabbled or 
I didn't listen fully. Now I listen. If they're telling me something, I hear you. I'm listening. And I'm going to do exactly as you guide me to because I know that they have my best interests right. at heart always. Right. Um, and so I, I just let that fear go, that fear of not knowing or that fear of, oh, my God, people are going to think I'm nuts. And I'm like, but wait, this is about me and my journey. I can't let those things stop me from getting to where I need to be to truly heal. And then, you know, also help others to get to that point too. But the only way to do that is if I'm good, I have to be perfectly healed and I have to energetically be where I need to be before I can even fathom a thought, you know? And yeah. so with, with all of that being said, I truly feel connected. It's such a beautiful thing. And I'm honored. I feel honored and I show gratitude for everything. Like every little thing I have in my life now, I show gratitude. I no longer compare myself to the material world and I don't feel like I need all of these things. I was kind of already a minimalist. Like for the past two or three years, I've become like a minimalist. Like I really don't need much. Now I am a hoarder when it comes to plants and crystals and all things yeah. <laughs> like that. But like the, the material, like I don't go in Sephora and spend like 300 on makeup anymore. I don't care about those things. Um, but I just, that is so fun. Show gratitude for the smallest things. <laughs> I was literally blessed you yesterday. I'm like, okay, I'm cute. I'm like, when you have, I was like working on my website website today. I was talking about, okay, these are symptoms when you're not in love with your soul. And I was just kind of like typing all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you have chance. And, da, 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 da. Yeah. and I look over at my crystals and my plants. I'm like, you're aligned. I'm like, <laughs> How many are addicted to crystals and plants when you're addicted to something? I'm like, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I mean, they're all high vibrational, they give life, they give off energy. I would rather have those things. Look at that beautiful gorgeous. <laughs> you're so funny. I love that crystal. She is a beauty. I can feel it through the phone, literally. She's beautiful. <laughs> Hey, baby. Would you, okay, so I want you to take, just take a guess. I know you've seen pictures because I, it's been, uh -huh. like, it's been like, excuse me, crystal porn over here with me and my <laughs> video taking of this thing. It's <laughs> not even. And then, um, <laughs> uh, and I got, oh, did you see this one? I got, just got that yesterday. Yeah, is that a, what is that, a quartz? It's a, yeah, it's a, Oh, I love point crystals. That yeah, was like, I was really nice. Been like so, I've been looking for one, but I want a tall one. Yeah, me too. That's my first like a fit. I mean, this is a point, and I have a lot of points, but just a little like that one's perfect. Little point. This is. I mean, I have got a ton of quartz, but um, but yeah, it's like, but you know, it's cool though because. I live next to one of the most amazing crystal shops on the planet. Okay, so I want you to guess how much this was. Hmm. <laughs> it weighs like, I didn't weigh it. I should have weighed it. It's very dense. It's probably at least 10 pounds. Yeah, it's I was going to say anywhere from 8 to 10. Way just way heavy. I want to put it on a little season so I can. Um, guessing. I would say $35. Oh, wow. You, you must have a really good <laughs> <laughs> The only reason I say that is because I'm like, maybe they just love her and they gave her a really good price. <laughs> but no. normally, though, something like that would be in the hundreds because I oh. bought really, you know, small, raw pieces of crystal for like $45. Yes. So I wouldn't doubt if you said anywhere from like $100, but I tried to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> How much was it? No, you're actually, <clears throat> excuse me. No, that's exactly right. It, that no, it was forty dollars. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah, it was wow. forty dollars. Uh, like this, this would normally be like thirty dollars. Yes, right. Okay, this was ten. Wow, you do. I need to come to your like, shop. Like this, <laughs> they can have this. all my coins. Look at this craziness. That look one's crazy. beautiful and it's so raw. Look at that. This yeah, that's like beautiful. Wow. Like, I live next to the most, I know I say it like it's like a mantra, just because I'm so utterly grateful for yeah. them, and they just, they just want to make the money, mm -hmm. 
there's people who shop there who turn around and sell for five, ten times as much as they buy it there for. Sometimes in a really shady way, too. Like, yeah. A little shady. Like, when I bought that, he's like, you're not going to sell it, are you? I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> they don't know you, do they? <laughs> they don't know your obsession. <laughs> no, no. No, no but $40, that, that's a steal. That That's a great we had two more that were just like a bunch of like that big and a bunch of points but this was the one that they had that was just like one massive point and yeah that was in any other store i mean the point isn't per it's not an intact point either mm -hmm. But because then if it was at his store, it would have been at least, you know, maybe 200. And then if it was an intact thing at some other store, it could be up to upwards of, you know, for that thing. So it's, it's not an intact point, but it's, it's pretty close. And it has, it's just amazing. The bottom of it, look at that. Beautiful. I mean. So beautiful. And you did. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal crazy. <laughs> so crazy. I, cannot help myself. I truly am like I don't think the that's that's the they thing are too. they're meant for us I yeah mm -hmm. I, the day that that was there I almost didn't go I was mm -hmm. gonna do it because every time I go in there I cannot like I'll be because there's a pistol there that I have on layaway and I told myself I'm not gonna buy anything else until I pay that off and it's mm -hmm. the most expensive in their store it's eight dollars. So you can imagine how amazing this. I'm sure is. it's amazing. It's crazy, and I can't believe. But I'm just a little bit. He's like, I don't care how long it takes you. If this is the crystal you want to pay. You want it? it I, they're amazing over there. I'm like, okay. So I told yeah. myself I was gonna buy something, and then I and then I was like, I almost did a U-turn down this. They're literally two minutes from my house. And I'm going to U-turn and walk with Rosie away, and my guides are like, you need to go there. Yay, right now. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, whenever I get that, there's always something special there for me. Right. And that was there for me. Actually, what? For the next 45 minutes, I could not stop thinking. I couldn't do my job. Oh, yeah. I couldn't you stop had to get thinking it. about this thing. It was $40. And I'm like, I, I, I know I'm not supposed to. And I told myself, and they're like, would you please go buy that crystal? <laughs> I'm like a pro at depriving myself. I know it doesn't look like it, but like I'm pretty, I'm pretty stingy with myself actually. So it's hard for me to do stuff like that. So when I spend two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, like I have no, like that's not a big deal. Like when it gets like more like that, I'm like, oh my god, it's a lot of money. But these are one in a lifetime, one in a, they're priceless. They really are impossible to price a lot of these things. And they come to us in special ways. A lot of them are coded. They're light and coded. They were coded millennia ago. You are other lifetimes and they're coming back to us to help us. Like when we're in our sleep, they're like activating us in our space. Yeah. The crystal realm and the crystal energies and how they work in our lives and how why are light workers so crazy and insane about crystals and they have their crystals and that's like the, it's like crystals and plants that's how we are because plants talk to us and we exchange this beautiful energy with our plants and our and our look at look at look at this I have freaking trees in my house and um. And it's an excuse for the birds. I look like this anyway. Yeah, I love the branches, though. That looks so good. <laughs> and, and then the crystals are the same way. There are these pieces, and I read this article about, um, not too long ago, about crystals and how they, you know, I was reading about crystals, but it was this beautiful thing about how, you know, don't disregard the power of the draw to a crystal when you feel that, like, tug in your chest for yeah crystal, you know what i'm talking about <laughs> i do you see a crystal and you're like oh, it's like a baby like you just met a baby have to have it you have to have it yep and you know luckily when you see them you can afford them <laughs> and yeah. actually <laughs> something happened and you're like oh my god and it could be a two dollar crystal or five dollar crit doesn't matter the price of it right. what it is the you know i tend to really like if i'm in the creek you want to hear the freak one of the this is so freaky i'll be i have a creek out here we have natural quartz let me show you some of my natural quartz that i have 
that that come through the creek? Yeah, they're just rocks and around here. Oh, that's so, so amazing. Like, I have them like everywhere. They're rare, and I kept finding this is this is one. Um, it's really it's like quartz. A whole wow. bunch of it, but like, there's I look at how beautiful that is. Yeah. Um, I have them. Um, sometimes they're this white, and sometimes they're they're all different. But anyway, I will be in the creek, and I'll be like looking over here, and all of a sudden, literally, this has happened to me several times. It's so, I'll just my handle. I won't even look. I won't even know what I'm doing. I'll just go like that, and I'll like, and I'll pull up a quartz, and I'll be like, whoa! And it was free. It oh, yeah, not harder. only that, but I wasn't even, like, my hand just went to it. Like, my hand wow. went to a hot spot on a, on a person's body, just, like, it just, wow. it's happened to me. Yeah, so this creek I have right here, oh, it's 555. All day, people, all day. It's, <laughs> it's, it's on a level. Um, so, anyway, I have a ton of just regular crystal quartz, rose quartz, and amethyst are, like, my top three. Yeah. List. Those are my top three too. Really, I yeah. cannot get this enough of them. Oh, look, look at this piece of rose. Rose quartz was the first crystal I'd ever got. Me too. I fell in love with her. Oh, she's this, so chunky. I love it. This is. Oh my gosh, I love her shape. Oh yeah. Wow. This that is was very interesting. Um, the first crystal that I bought at my rock shop over here. Ah, so that one's really special. And I saw it, and I was like, are you kidding me? This is sitting here? Because, like, I just, like, I saw the whole, like, face, mm -hmm. the ear, the mouth, like, mm -hmm. the whole, like, side of it. To me, it looked like a side of a cat or a lion. Or I was like, what? Yeah, it looks like a fossil to me, like the side of some type of animal fossil. Like, it could be anything, depending on what your imagination looks like. But I am picking up both vibes. Look at <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Yeah. And and then like a month a month later I'm in the creek. Adventuring is what I call it, like a child, because that's when I'm really in my zone. And I find this. Wow. So we have the male and the female. Wow. I know. How insane is that? They even have the same point. I know. That's that's kind of freaky. That's freaky. <laughs> that is really freaky. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. That's so cool. Wow. So they sit on my table like this looking at Yeah. I, I would do the same. Wow. Yeah, just another one of those and it was like dug into the into the the, the dirt and the water uh -huh. and everything and just this little point you can see how, it, how it's different color on this side than this side this was like in yeah. in the dirt like it's dark you see oh. and this is completely different look at all the detail this thing it looks like it's carved like it has like the eye i don't know if you can see that yes i can it's just, it's mind boggling me that they are the same shape. I know. Like, what are the odds? And that within, it's within like a month of going to the store and getting this, and this was a uh -huh. dollar a pound, so I think I paid like a dollar fifty or two bucks for this. Yeah. Oh. Over here. <laughs> Some places are overcharging then because that's insane. I know. That's really yeah, insane. It's, just like, it's, the mo it's one of the most beautiful pieces. I was like, I, when I saw it there, I'm like, are you, like, I was like, it was one of the first time I ever went. I was like, this is like by the, they sell it by the pound. I have two Amazing. huge pieces outside on my deck that are like this big. I paid like eight and nine bucks for them. And they're like, wow. Oh, Those are usually $200 crystals. <laughs> I want to own a crystal oh. shop. This okay. one's a lot more pink. The ones I have outside, they have more like yellows in them, but I love that. Like it doesn't have to be perfect for me but yeah. then, within like just a couple of weeks this was all buried and this little piece was sticking out his little ear and I like dug, I was just like obsessive about it I'm like what's with this rock I don't know but you gotta have it I'm like okay <laughs> that's how I am in my life you. I tell everyone that it's for you they pick you literally yeah that's another thing mouth. look at that 
That's another thing. But, um, people have been asking me for advice on crystals lately. And I've just been telling them, don't overwhelm yourself with finding the right one. It will choose you. So whatever you resonate with, whatever makes sense, whatever catches your eye, that's the one you need in this moment. And I literally tell that to everyone. Oh, that one's so beautiful. Yeah, They're going to think we're insane. This? <laughs> And this I'm is sorry. just giving me so much happiness right now. I'm living through your crystals. <laughs> that I'm one is beautiful. I know. From over here, it looks like diamonds. Just like rough, uncut diamonds. That's what okay. that looks like. Okay, so so it's a so do you see the dragon head? The dragon face? His face is like it's a it's a side. Wow. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. You're you're helping me to look deeper into the shapes. So like you can see, like, it. pretend it's like a fossil almost. Just a small yeah. Thing. You can see, like, his mouth right here. You can see his eye. And then the head. With Oh, my gosh. Full on so head. Like, look at that. I got this at my rock shop. And <laughs> I need to come to your rock shop. Oh, yeah. The whole world does because they're amazing. But Wow. Look inside his head right here. Can you see that? That is, like, insane. This is, like my baby that one's insane he i mean i level up this one's just almost like i saw this and it was funny i was guided to that store, to the store and i remember in my vision i saw something very light in color and i was like okay and it was about this size and, I'm like, and okay. i was like all right i'm i'm looking for that and there was some what was it, it was like the blue and white celestite i think Mm. Boy, this piece was absolutely gorgeous and I was like whoa how much is that and there wasn't a price tag on it and still didn't know you gotta call it Pam and I was like I have to that's like <laughs> expensive and um and I was like okay well just let me know she got my you know number and I was leaving and I almost left and it was like I was pushed back into the store mm. and she's like I thought you were gone I'm like yeah I'm but I'm I'm not. I'm going to meet you. I go, I know. It's so weird. I go, I go, yeah, I know, but I'm not. She's like looking at me. Her face is so funny. And I was like, yeah, I know. And I turned and this was just like, boom, sitting right there. I know how I was so focused on this other one because I saw I was like going down the line and I saw it. I was like, oh, wow, this, this is amazing. And she, this one was just like, two feet away from it but I didn't even get there it's kind of overwhelming mm -hmm. I always have a cat I don't know if you can see but I always have a not all, well, I try to always have a candle by him just because he's so beautiful um yeah and uh 20 bucks 20 dollars yeah I I need to come there <laughs> So I, so it's like, to me, it's like, not only I was thinking about this, you know, when I, when we talk about, oh, this, we can circle back here. When we talk about being grateful, mm -hmm. how you're just in this state of gratefulness and just seeing how beautiful your life is and how beautiful everything is. And yes, there's bad things. To do, and yes, people are suffering. And yes, you've suffered. And yes, there's shit to get over. And yes, there's stuff to figure out. And yes, 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 yes. You can go through that all day long. But at the same time, in this right, right now moment, you can think if you really just take a beat, you can think of 8 billion things to be grateful for, right? And um, and to live in that space as much as you possibly can. So I was thinking the other day, I'm like, you know, how grateful I am to um, have this place, this space that I live in that I was able to come to, that I came and, you know, activated the land here and have, have leveled up in exponential wow. ways that I knew wouldn't have happened elsewhere and that I live within walking distance. I mean, I can't, it's harder to get to a grocery store than it is to get to my shop. Yeah, right. It's right there. And they're so amazing and they're so generous and they're so giving with what they have. And I, I got most of these crystals that, that I, I now own from that shop. <clears throat> I had some before I came, but nothing like I have now in the, the almost year that I've lived here. Because even though I've been pretty poor, um, up until now it's been pretty, pretty brutal. 
Yeah. Here and there, I can afford, you know, two bucks for beautiful me. crystals. Yeah. So anyway, was we were talking about, you know, being <laughs> grateful and in that space and everything. Um, do you find that, like, if you start, like, have you been dealing with like any of the like overwhelming sensations? Where yeah. You just, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um. I kind of felt like that yesterday. I, I'll just sit here and I'm like overwhelmed with like joy, but also like um, the more I've been seeing the angel numbers, I've been getting overwhelmed. Remember yeah. you made a comment how you just, you're overwhelmed because you live like just a beautiful life, a divine life. I'm feeling that way. Yeah. Just the smallest things I show. Oh, yeah, I told you I was like, I was just bawling at just how beautiful. Yeah, I and I've been like, I just, that. It was just one thing after, it was one message after, it was the angels and Jesus, just one after the other, after the other, and like, after like an, a couple hours of that, I was literally just bawling. I'm like, yeah. they're just so uplifting and loving and giving the messages and and it, and it, it can be very overwhelming, you know, but in not a bad way, but sometimes it's like, you just kind of like, I told you, oh, I told you like my heart, like I was like my chest, like was literally my heart chakra was expanding so much during that whole, like, whatever was going on that day that my heart was just like expanding, but it literally, it hurt. And that's the last few days that like, uh, I felt as a ascension symptom, as a symptom of kind of different energies and coming in with enlightenment energies and stuff that like my heart chakra has been like getting these like almost like painful I don't even know what to call it like they've they've quieted down there was like two days where you just be like oh my gosh like I just feel like if somebody doesn't I wasn't aware of all that might get really freaked out you know <laughs> like that's right you know, but, um, that's like a real, I started feeling like literally, well now I'm so connected to the whole chakra system with myself and other people that like, they'll just set off and I'll know exactly which one's doing what, but right. one of the first ones that I could really feel that feeling with my chakras with my heart chakra, that like heartwarming, chest expanding, heat feeling energy. Have you felt what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. As the moment our session ended, remember I told you, I said, I'm going to go to sleep. I didn't go to sleep. You said you were you to sleep. And I thought that was going to happen, but I, I, um, I made some food and then I was eating and I was sitting here in my element. I'm like, life really was never that bad. It was just what I was carrying. But when I really, truly looked back on how far I have come and the, and, and the things that I've been through and the fact that I'm, we're all alive and, you know, we, we can choose to be healthy and make conscious choices. And even down to my vegan burrito that I made, I'm like, I have the choice Beautiful. to be this way, to eat and, and show gratitude. And, and so even just eating that food, it made me happy. Um, just to have that fulfilling, um, that, that fulfilling emotion of starting out hungry and now I'm full and just every little thing that I took for granted, I just don't feel that way. And my heart is completely open. Like, um, even to me, I think before then it was open to other people and, you know, I'm worried about everyone else and I'm giving love to them, but I'm like, you're not even giving it to yourself. And so now I feel it for me. Like I genuinely, I'm in love with me and I know it has a lot to do with, with, you know, having my rose quartz around all the time, but my heart <laughs> chakra literally did open, um, fully, not a little bit. It didn't crack. It's fully open now. It's, it's ready to receive and to give. Um, and I feel that every day waking up That's every so day I wake up, I just feel like you said that infinite love and light energy. That is the only way to describe it. And it's not something that you just see. You start to feel it. You yeah. start to feel it. You start to notice it when you're in situations and you don't like respond the same when you're in, you know, certain thought processes and you notice how you don't feel the same mm -hmm. instead of allowing it to bring you down or make you feel worthless or whatever those negative low vibration emotions were. Right. We don't have room for those anymore. Right. It's all about 
love and infinite love and light and positivity and all of these high vibrations that I'm on. I don't ever want to come down from that. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And so, yes, my heart it's chakra no, is very much off. And you'll know. if you. I start, can feel it. If you start feeling off, if that starts wearing down. And people, and I tell people, well, some people, you know, having one session will be great and good and that's wonderful. But depending on your lifestyle, depending on where you live, depending on who you deal with, depending on, you know, different things, depending on if you're a healer yourself, you know, like we all need help, right. you know, and, and yep. you may need, you know, your, uh, we do, we, I think are one of the things that we're, and I hope, you know, at another point, at some point, you know, I'm going to find, because I've got to be really careful if you I let, like, do what you, you let me do, we all have to, but I'm just exponentially, like, I've had people tr try to mess with my energy from yards away and try to tap in and extrapolate. And I've dealt with all sorts of psychic attacks and stuff. And no, you're divine. You I are true. A little bit, right? but, but we all need that, that help. And, and now you know, you'll know. You know, yep. and I hope it doesn't happen anytime soon, but you'll be like, okay, I'm off. I'm, I'm clogged. I'm this, I'm that. And I, and hopefully you're empowered in that. You, like, you'll be like, oh yeah, I did this and I did that. I'm feeling great again. Or you might be like, yeah, you know, I might need to get back in line or this happened or I traveled or who knows what, but you, but you'll know the difference and it won't be a big whole thing in your life. Yeah. More like it's acknowledging, just, okay, time to tune back in, time to wind up a little bit. Yeah. Fix those screws. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, like I tell you, it's like the whole thing with like clearing and the grounding with Gaia and her and being tethered your chakras into those main chakras because the other you know they go out from we have many 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 chakras in our bodies um <clears throat> but when those ones are doing what they're supposed to be doing they just trigger everything else and we come in with the infinite love light so yes yeah, we get them all they're all going to be working and all going to be online that's the you know the the goal with everybody depending on what's up and going on with somebody, it may, it mm -hmm. may be, you know, they get 50% more opened up. That's 50, mm -hmm. that's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, whatever is better. Uh, but once we do that practice and, and really connect and feel those deep connections and that, um, that unconditional love from our angels, from our spirit tribe, from Mother, Father, God, from Gaia, from we can feel it from our soul self. We'll know we just kind of feel. I think it's just easy to get in that like cradled kind of bliss state of knowing, you know what, before my state of mind was fear and anxiety and stress and how's everything going to work out and survival. I call it survivalist mode. Yeah. We're, we're we're programmed to be survivalists, especially yeah. if we've had really jacked up, you know, childhoods or lives or illnesses or whatever, we become survivalists or, you know, really messed up things financially for us. Some people have gone through that over and over again or maybe one big time or whatever. So we get in these survivalist modes and we, we don't, we're so disconnected. Mm -hmm. And when we have that, we're able to be in those, in that frame of mind, I guess, and those, con and that connection where you do feel cradled and love with, like, I told people, that's why I say, like, uh, my hat, like, the hashtag, are, I love you already, because, like, mm -hmm. I do, it's like, I already love you, like, I love, I love, even the person who's acted you know against me because of blah 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 like all I do is I love you and I send love to you and I love you already like anybody right. that's gonna come to me like I are like I just that's just how I feel like I got there at some point where I'm just like I love everything and everybody to maybe an irritating for you but I cannot help myself I just do but it's also not to my detriment. It's like I can, you know, I can work within that and feel good about it and right. and use that in such a, a positive way. But target it too. You know, mm -hmm. that's what's important is that we're we're like we feel it for ourselves all the time. We're in this state of like uh, 
communicating with our tribe, whether we're talking out loud or we're in our head or whatever. And if we have those, like you were saying, those moments where you're, you know, thinking in a negative way, it's so much easier to snap out of it. It's so yeah. much easier to hear them going, what are you doing? Like, why are you, you know, they'll actually talk to you like that. Like, okay, yeah. let's get back on track. Like they'll full on, like, I, I tried to, I'm like, I'm in a constant dialogue. When I almost drop something and I don't, and it's not a big, huge, fat mess, I'm thanking my angels for that because, yeah. you know, I feel their, I feel like every, like whether they have something to do with it or not in my brain, it feels like every little thing that I'm helped with and assisted with and anything in my life, I am grateful for that positive energy, you know? I can agree. And, you know, I think it's just so easy, you know, it, it really is mm -hmm. to have, you know, you don't have to wait around for the big things to be grateful for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is, you know, not that difficult. Like this, like this face looking at me. Hi, baby. I'm grateful for this face. I have so many great faces to look at. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, too. I... I already love and appreciate, like me and my dogs were so in love with each other, but even just looking at their faces, especially after our session, yeah, that like connected me to them. It's like the closest thing to giving birth <laughs> as you possibly can feel for something, right? Because they're my kids and people laugh at me because they'll say, how old is Prince? And I'll go, oh, I gave birth to him in January. And it's, it's a joke, but the point is that's how close I, I feel that. connected to yeah. them as if I gave birth to them. Yeah. Um, but even now, there's like a newfound sense of appreciation for them, even the difference in their personalities, um, like how you got to tap into Prince and you see how crazy he is. I'm still going with the flow on that, but I appreciate the differences in their personalities, like just the smallest little things. I feel like I understand him now. Yeah. And now I see that what he needs from me. You know, and I know that a lot of those behaviors, they won't last forever, but now it helped me to tap more into what he needs. It's not just about me, it's yeah. about them too. Yeah, he's really curious. That's like the most thing. I had to just like, put him in the plane and they won't let us talk. <laughs> I, was like, I know I've talked about you guys. I'm like, I, you know, worked on, on um, the sweetest lady and, and her <laughs> dogs in Florida and people were like, oh my gosh. And I, I was like, yeah, when he talks about how naughty he is about what he needs, he doesn't care. And he does it. It was just so cute how he showed me that. <laughs> um, he was like, I'm like, all right, let me tap in with him. I start feeling his body. And I just feel kind of like, you know, here and there. Not like it was with, with, uh, Richard. with Richard, no. Yeah. And, um, and then he just, like, cut me off. Like, I'll stop you right there and just tell you how it is. I <laughs> it in my mouth, and I don't care about the consequences. And sometimes when I shit, it looks like this. And then he showed me himself, like, pooping. Yeah. And then he's, like, it's, like, you know, like, wax crayons or something and, like, some other. Oh, my gosh. I caught him trying to eat poop the other day. And I go, what are you doing? You just ate dinner. What are you doing? And then I thought about you. I thought about everything. And I'm, like. I won't even yell at him. I'll yeah, just pick yeah. up the pad, we'll hold it, and we'll throw it in the trash. There's probably something in there he just, like, needed to check out again. And we'll just act Well, I fed them um, carrots for snack, and I think he was just, like, one of the carrots back. Yeah, he's really weird. <laughs> Friends, no. It's okay. But, yeah, he's whining yeah, right he's, now. He wants to come out. He's a... <laughs> He's that I will, I will discover what this is with my mouth and my stomach. And I don't care. Like he was literally like, sometimes I get a stomach ache, but I really don't care. And I can tell because I have to give him some little herbal medicine for that. So I know he does. He does. <laughs> He's just kind of like, I know that if I didn't do this, that wouldn't happen, but I can't help myself. Yeah, he you really know? can't. So you I know, know that now though. Should, like cannot keep, like if you walk him, like she's the same way if I, my eyeballs are not on her and she comes across like a chicken bone or a piece of you know who knows what disgusting thing she's like chewing on it to taste i'm like are you ew and then i see, like the best thing they're like i don't like it and i'm like how does this make sense <laughs> i would ask myself that all the time like why does he do that why do you want to eat this what is wrong with him but 
just tapping into him now, I, I literally laugh at him because he's so hilarious to me. He's just, that's my barbarian child. I accept it for yeah. what it is. He I love is it. So different. They're so different. Like Very we'll much just, so. We'll tell the viewers that she she has um, King Richard and he's had seizures and she was mm -hmm. pretty sure that somebody she lived with may have hurt him and, and not sure exactly, been to different specialists and all sorts of stuff. And yeah. so you going in that, that he had this, even though he hasn't had a seizure in a long, in, since February, it's been a while, Yeah. Um, that there was, you know, in there. so I just kind of scanned his body and then when I got it, well, I didn't even, it really didn't take long because they were right next to you during your healing. So it was really yeah. easy for me to just get right in there. <clears throat> and as soon as I did, I felt just this pain on this whole side of my head, my ear and my eye. And it was really bad. And basically, yeah. I was like, that's basically like a migraine is what I was like. They're like, the his guides, they're telling me, yeah, he gets that's what happens he gets this migraine thing and he gets really sensitive to yeah to his noise and light and even food he won't even chew he, he doesn't want to chew and his eye will do this really weird it barely open. it hurts really bad it's like yeah. you, i'm sure you've got a migraine that's what it feels like yeah but see now since i found out what that was it's so hard to like what it felt like to me was just this like I don't even know, like this gray, okay, I'm going to try my best to describe visually what it looked like to me and how it, what I was working with visually in my head, where I was like, okay, it's, I'm like, we'll just go slow, and this, it's not like digging in super hard, because he, he did start whining when I started removing it, yeah, um, and so I was like, okay, I need to go forward because it would, it felt like something like he has the tiniest little head. So I'm yeah. gonna work big. I'm gonna work bigger, okay? And he but, has an open fun towel too, so that might be part of the reason why. Like he well, has. An open yeah, fun it could be more. It could have been more susceptible, but it felt like this piece of meat on oh. top of his head or his brain, like oh. to it. baby. And like when I went to. You know remove it it's kind of like how you would almost imagine when you're removing if you've ever removed meat from a bone and how it's like you know what i'm talking about yeah like that kind of like yeah. like it'll come but it's really stuck on there yeah and that's what it felt like to me so i just so instead of me just kind of like easily pulling it off it doesn't work that way like i had to just like very slowly just little like millimeter by millimeter by millimeter just work Cause it, it, and then like it it did eventually let go and then he was it was gone and yeah he, yeah he was way better after that and um yeah that was like really the only problem that, that he had but he was just a major problem like I so I think that like from this point forward I he may he may be more susceptible because he is open in there that you know so now you'll know if that starts happening what needs to happen you know um but because but I think that there was an actual thing and it became worse and worse and worse and certain things may trigger it. It could be atmospheric. It could be somebody's energy. It could be, you know, it's like some I definitely of, know he picks up on energy. Oh I know yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. He is yeah. he is definitely way more energetically sensitive than Prince. Yeah. But I believe um I I lost I was five months pregnant with a baby boy when I was twenty. And I lost him. I was surgically induced. And a strong part of me believes he was reincarnated in, in Richard. Aww. Just that connection we have is so special. Aww. It's so special. And when he has those seizures, um, he looks right at me like, Mom, like, please help me. Like, I please, yeah. like, make this go away. And yeah. you just, that's so heartbreaking to yeah. see that. But he's also so brave. He fights. I've had neurologists, veterinarians tell me, just put him down. And Richard looks at me like, eh, put me down? I'm not ready to go yet. We can we can figure this out, but don't put me down. And I'm like telling him I would never. Putting you down would be the very last option. And that would only be when your, your spirit tribe, his guides, and he felt like that was absolutely necessary if he was suffering. But we wouldn't call that suffering. Look at him now. He's the happiest dog ever. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The happiest yeah. dog ever. And he he spit up just a little bit on um, the day after he spit up like yellow fluid, and I was concerned because I'm like, oh, like, these are starting points of his like, seizure. Like bile. So be fine. Yeah, just like a little bile. Yeah. But yeah. usually in the past, that would be the beginning stages uh, of the seizure. He would throw up like that. He wouldn't eat a few days following. His poop would be weird. And then a random day he has a seizure. So I got worried. And then within five minutes, he drank water and he was on about his business. And now him and Prince are like crazily energetic. Like they already kind of were, but they're like very energetic now. Like, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. overwhelming. <laughs> but so are you. So you guys are kind of like, and that's why we're I'm feeding like, off of each other. Yeah. I'm like, it would be so good if we could just do, that's why I said, you know, we should just do, we're going to do you. And then you told me about him. I'm like, we should just do all three of you at the same time. Yeah. Like you all, you know, nice and good. And there, there was energy definitely attached to Prince. He, he, it was good for him to get clear because those little pockets will just, fester and attract more and because right. he's the naughty little boy picked eating whatever he can naughty, put his naughty. mouth on then you know he's <laughs> kind of susceptible to that and don't forget i told you about the the spray well okay so you said um rose hip oil no um rose uh, rose so just rose oil yeah rose essential yeah. oil and then um himalayan rock salt okay uh, and spring water. If you wanted to add something else in there, like lavender, you could do that with the rose, but the rose definitely, because it's the highest vibrational um, flower and, and, you know, flower essence. I think it's in. Okay. You know, my kitty is. And, and I'll just make that little tincture and then spray it on us, like just spray it on them. Okay. So get, get like, here, I'll show you. Get like a water bottle. I love these glass bottles. I got these. Me too. Love that. Um, Oh, that was in perfect. front of the wrong camera. He, and so just fill it up with spring water. Do like a like a handful of rock salt and just leave your rock salt in there. And mm -hmm. you know, just a few drops. Okay. You wanna know you wanna when you spray it, you wanna smell rose. Okay, perfect. Just not overwhelmingly, but enough to where you know that it's in there and just spray it over you and over the dogs and on their little paws. You don't have to get them soaked, but just enough because that's where they're, you know, they're, they're grounding, okay. which is great, but they also can be picking up energies too and our animals are really susceptible to energy. Right. So, okay, that's great. That's great. Um, okay, so... <laughs> yeah, I could just talk forever, but um, I'm, gonna to, I'm gonna have to edit this for the people who are like, I can't watch this like intro video all day long, people. <laughs> um, but okay, so we talked about the chakras and how good that felt, and um, to me, that's always like so visually like amazing. And when you were talking about how you could like see her, or, you know, her essence. Yeah, I was just envisioning like. like yeah, to me, it's just kind of, she just kind of blends in and moves, and she's not solid, but she is, and she's kind of, like, flowy and beautiful and has yeah. a face and doesn't, and just, but it, more than anything, is just so loving and nurturing and mm -hmm. safe feeling and gives you those feelings, mm -hmm. you know? To me, it's like after each one of those chakras are, are tethered and, connect, and connected, as I go up the person's body, I feel it's just, it's almost like just like locking something into place. It's just like, you know? Like you just like, in the most like sweet, loving, brightly, rainbowy way. And, um, it's really visually stimulating because I like, I like it how we have you feel it and see it from your body, feel it and see it from the outside perspective, feel it and see it from being where you are at receiving you, feeling it, you know, from seeing it from all these different perspectives so you can really get it that this is happening you know on so many and and you're witnessing it that the witness of it is so powerful to me and um and her presence there is just like when I started, I got all emotion. I always, do. yeah, always do. At one point, I'll start crying at some point during a healing because it's always so emotional for me. And um, I try not to, but it's like, 
Uh, <laughs> it's just what it is, you know? And, um, because it, it's so, it's so overwhelming. Okay, so then after that, we did, um, went up to your, you know, your crown, got y'all opened up there, and then just let that get you in line and, and open you up fully. And then we went and worked on your problem area. We yes. had that, that visualization. So how yep. was that for you? So remember you said that envision an outer body experience, like basically envision you, your angels, me, and, and everyone touching that problem area and healing. I was able to really concentrate my thoughts and I could see myself laying on the bed, also touching myself. We, all of our hands were stacked and yeah. we were doing this. I'm like, yeah. we are really doing this. And the first 20 minutes, I just let you do your thing. Energetically, I was present, but when, when it got closer to actually concentrating on the problem area, yeah. Um, and the healing got deeper and I was yeah. in a deeper meditative state, my, my entire energy was all in. Yeah. So yeah. it was just as like energetically pulling for me as it was for you and everyone yeah. present. But I literally, as my eyes were closed, I envisioned all of us, our hands were stacked on top of my body and we were all just on the same energy force. We all wanted this just as bad. It was, it was just such a beautiful thing because I played a part in my healing. Yes. And that for me was a big deal. It wasn't just relying on something else. Right. It wasn't just, you know, because sometimes I think we get desperate and we, we expect a healer to do everything. You have yeah. to meet them halfway, energetically, yeah. mentally, emotionally. You have to, like you said, be ready for it, but then also put in the work too. Yeah. So I could feel myself wanting it that bad. My energy was there and it was full full on which is you were right you do get hungry or sleepy afterwards yeah moving <laughs> energy i had no energy <laughs> for that yeah it's like a hardcore workout <laughs> it's so it was it's like because you you feel the heat you feel the vibrations yeah. you feel your body's transmuting energy it, it really is like it was a legit transmutation that is yeah. the best way to describe it yeah that's and a good way to put it do i feel better about my healing absolutely that little that fear bug that was inside of me that was feeding on to fear and making my problems worse. Yeah. I believe we exterminated it. And so I don't, excuse me. I don't, um, I don't even think about it. And when the thoughts do come up, it's more like, like a memory. Yes. Best way to describe it. It doesn't feel like my reality. It feels like a memory. That's yeah. a really good way to describe it. It's like, I'll think about it. And I'm like, wow, but you don't even feel the same way about it. Right. It's not consuming your life anymore. It, you realize it's just energy. Right. And once we got to that point, you helped me to realize this is just energy. And so if we're balanced, we're cleansed, we're sacred, we're not feeding that energy. And so if it's not getting what it wants, it's going to die. Mm -hmm. It will die off. I truly understand the importance of that now. Um, and I couldn't imagine ever going back to how I felt before then. I truly feel, um, love and, and, and nurtured and acceptance for myself, literally. Yeah. Um, and yeah, cause your whole, <laughs> your whole space about that was a completely 180 from there. Yeah. Completely. It was detrimental for my life, you yeah. know? Um, and like I said, once I was able to acknowledge that this is just energy, and so you can choose to give to it or we can transmute it into healing and let's put our energy somewhere else where it matters more. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. It is just a memory and it's a memory that is fading slowly, but it doesn't consume me anymore. Right. It doesn't. And it's only inspired me to love myself more, to nurture myself. Good. It's helped me to identify with where I was putting my energy. So once I realized where I was putting it, I'm like, okay, this isn't not fulfilling me. It's really bringing me down. It's making me feel like a piece of crap. It's, it's well, making it's, me believe things about like, myself that aren't yeah, true. It was like a cancer in your whole yes. everything. That's what it felt like, a whole yeah. cancer in my body. Yeah. And it was making me believe things about myself that weren't even true. Like sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Oh, and absolutely. feeding that energy was literally not even allowing me to see the person that I truly am. And so this healing 
brought me back to the surface of who I am. Um, and it helped to clear out energies from the past. So it's like, okay, this is who I am, but also I'm, I've released a lot of things. So I'm getting to know myself all over again. Mm -hmm. I'm finding things out about myself that are amazing me, like showing that gratitude for who I truly am. Like, I'm just like, you're hot stuff, girl. <laughs> and I can't believe I didn't even believe those things before. Not like physically, like literally like just spiritually and emotionally too. Like I feel fulfilled. I really do. And each day gets better. I write more where some days I would let that energy consume me. So I didn't have motivation just to do the small things to even make myself feel better. It is a point now to nurture, to continue my rituals, to do whatever makes me happy. Um, you, you told me about nature, how connected I am, oh. with nature, how I should be in nature. I already knew that about myself, Yeah. but these energies were keeping me from that. Yeah. Now I, every day I'm outside. It doesn't matter what the weather looks like. If it's raining, I'm on my patio. I'm having some tea. I'm, getting my whole life um today I spent like two hours in the sun and I'm just I'm soaking in what truly makes me happy so I'm like I said I'm focusing my energy on those things now we don't care about the other low vibrations those were really keeping me in a, in a time dimension in yes. a segment that I just did no longer needed to be in I and you know what you said to me take what you you learn from it but that's it don't let it consume you Understand that this is a part of your journey. These are things you have to learn so that you can help others to heal. And it's so true. My experiences now will help others to heal, even if that's just getting them to tap into their, their, their true self, loving themselves first, realizing that we can't do much if we're not tapped into ourselves. You have to really be connected. That soul and that heart, they need to be connected. That is how I feel. My soul and my heart are now connected. They were separate. They were pulling away from each other. My heart wanted this. My soul was dying for this. My soul wanted to live its mission. Now they are together. My heart is like, we're backing up your soul because we understand your purpose. You now understand your purpose. Now let's just do the damn thing. And that's how I feel. <laughs> that is really how I feel. I, it's just, sometimes words aren't even good enough to describe what you're feeling, but you know, you know what I mean. But yeah, so this has been the most amazing experience um and like you said i have i have come across healers that are not even real healers i've come across people that they're not in this for the right reasons and then that helped me to realize they haven't healed from their own things yet so when i say i truly believe that the universe brought me to you they really did they truly did and you are so divine Aww. And you are not something to be taken for granted. You are literally, you're such a beautiful soul. And meeting you now, it feels like more than a relationship with my healer. Because, right, every healer needs a healer, right? I truly have found a friend. Someone that I can, I can come to you about anything. Um, yeah, and I believe that what you're doing is definitely your life calling because if you can do this to me remotely and help me change and ground and come to terms with who I am, I can only imagine being in your presence. That'd be insane. That would be insane. So I thank you. I truly, from the bottom of my heart, my boys, we thank you. This isn't the end. I'm sure we'll have plenty of other conversations and I need some tuning up. I'm going to have to hit you up, but just like for right now, the way I feel, this way to describe it, I am complete. I accept everything I've been through. I actually can find beauty in those things. And when you look at that part of it, then it's like, okay, none of that other stuff matters. Those were just little nasty, negative little parasites that I was feeding. And it kind of makes me feel foolish. I, I let them eat so well. That I, wasn't really, I wasn't feeding what really was hungry, what really needed. <laughs> You know, and I let them get fat and chunky and abandoning the what really yeah, needed me. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, it does. Feel, and I'll do that, you know, sometimes kids, trust me, I am nowhere near perfect. Sometimes I get in my, you know, I get frustrated and I, I get whatever too, or I think that I, whatever, I get, I can get triggered. I'm highly targeted. So it's a constant like battle to, you know, it keep it real in the flow and not let other things bother me but sometimes it does and and 
I'll feel that too. I'll be like, oh my God, I'm totally like, I'm totally letting whatever this is kind of rule this moment yeah. or I'll get this. Sometimes it really is like, if we're to, even somebody like me can, can fall into that mind spiral of either fear or anger or resentment or, or feeling slighted or judged or being judgmental or any of that shamey, judgy, whatever, so quickly. Um, and then you're in the trap of after you figure that out that you're doing that to then judge that, mm -hmm. to judge, to judge your human and in whatever those little moments happen to be. Right. So it's like, okay. And then without being hard on yourself, just go, well, okay, well, that was that moment moving on, you know, like, you know, you just can't, because then you're feeding that even more. And that's a trap that, that we can get into very easily. The, yeah. I call it the distraction and the chaos trap yeah. that the little landmines that get literally like, if you can imagine you're just doing your life and here comes a whole handful of just it's just going to fall and where it lands anywhere around you is good because it's just going to keep you distracted this way or this way or this way or this way. It could be people at work. It could be the person you dated. It could be a family member. It could be your neighbor. It could be um, whatever, the person at the grocery store, the person yeah. honking at you on the street. I mean, yeah. it goes on and on and on at the possibilities and they're just landmines just waiting to stick and to take your good energy and to get you in a distracted spiral away from, you know, you can go like, be like this and go whoo, down here, like real quick. Yep. Or you can like, just kind of go, okay, there it is. And just kind of go and, and be above it and also be above it when you're, when you're not. I have a problem. I know for a fact letting go of the times where I am reactionary, where I, where my mouth is faster than my, you know, yeah. me, let's say, or, or I am in an energetically crispy day and my fuse is a little shorter for people kind of coming at me. Yeah. Um, and I have said some of the people, um, where later on I'm like, or I was reactionary, or I should have handled it, you know, and I just beat the hell out of myself about yeah. it. I feel so bad mm. on so many different levels that I behave that way. And that's, some, you know, just another thing to work on, to be gentle with yourself and in those moments of humanness. Because no matter what, while we're in this lifetime, while we're in these bodies, while we're you know, prior to transcending and, and keeping this plane, whenever that may be, mm -hmm. we're going to be human, you know, yeah. we are, and we are going to feel more than other people, no matter how high our vibe is and how many abilities and amazing things we both be done or whatever, we're mm -hmm. always going to be human. We're always going to have those aspects of of feeling ultra <laughs> ultra feeling yeah. on different levels so it's the balance of that that is so important to to be gentle with ourselves to remember our humanness and to be okay with that not always have to be like spiritually perfect and to just you know cry sometimes or or just go today you know how many times my guides have been like today you're just gonna lay down and you're not <laughs> you're just gonna let things you're just gonna just stop <laughs> and yeah. I'm like okay I think I really need to do that you're absolutely right it's literally like like I imagine like a grandma figure going honey you're just gonna lay down right now okay yeah. like you just <laughs> you know <laughs> Like, um, and there, and the, and in those times, I have to tell you, one of those times where I was so spiritually like twisted up because, ah, my aunt. Um, there is so much, you know, when you're waking up, there's so many things that are coming at you 
at such rap, that's what we're talking about being overwhelmed. And I tell people, you know, when you go through this, you kind of have to, you know, strap on the, the, the big seatbelts that they have in like NASCAR. It's not just this yeah. one, but it's like, <laughs> it's like over the crotch and the track. <laughs> With the helmet too. And the helmet. Right. <laughs> it's a total like yeah. You and you just have to. I mean, it really, really is. You have to be ready for the propulsion and kind of this, this, the losing the stomach at some point and on all the different feelings that you want I remember oh you I don't know had you know this is well you're so young this is way before you it's a movie that's called Space Camp no I you thought of that. Space Jam I'm like that's definitely not Space, no it's a movie called <laughs> Space Camp and actually um Joaquin Phoenix is in it and he's like maybe 10 years old in this movie oh it's a really, there's a lot of, like, people that you would know in it, but it's, it's I'm obsessed with this movie, all these kids that go to space camp in Texas, and they learn how to be astronauts, it's a really Wow, cool. I should look, find that movie. It's a really fun movie, um, um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I'm like, there was a point to that? Um, space camp, yeah, uh. No, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Well, they, like, learned how to do, uh, how to be in space and stuff. And uh, I, I literally, like, lost my train of thought. I'm like, I had, there was a connection there. Uh, oh, when you're, like, you're actually in space. Like, when you see um, astronauts and they do that, like, shaky thing and then they have, like, these different parts of the atmosphere they go through feel these different sensations in their body and their awareness of things are completely different because their atmosphere is completely different because their gravity is completely different. It's kind of like that. Like ascension is just kind of like that. You go through these um, and you're alone for the most part, mm -hmm. aside from being with your spirit tribe. Yeah. So that's lesson number one is to recognize you know, while it feels alone, I'm never alone, and I've got a, a lot of beings and entity or whatever, however you want to, you know, talk if you say that, um, so, but it feels alone a lot of the times, or at least in the beginning, and, um, but then at some point you do, you have your boost. So with you, this was your boost, mm -hmm. and then after that, there's all the different sensations of, of literally being a new you on a new world and figuring all of these things out and learning what your true um, essence is and your soul is and your, and your abilities are. And really, you know, I know I have many abilities and I'm talented in many ways. It doesn't mean that I'm meant to do all that stuff, you know? Right doesn't mean that all the things that I can potentially be really good at, like well, back in the Matrix days, I could, I could basically sell ice to an Eskimo. I'm one of those people. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, like I had offers at different points in my life where I could have worked in different types of sales because I was good at selling. Mm -hmm. And made pretty good, you know, like pretty good money. A lot mm -hmm. of different types of sales, you can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But the overall, um, what's the word? Culture in pretty much any sales environment is it's the bottom line that matters the most money. Mm -hmm. And I, it didn't matter to me really what that industry was or what it was all about. I didn't like any type of job that it was like centric or people didn't matter where it was all about that. And so I never had, I didn't have any big sales job because even though I was good at it, I didn't want to do it, you know? Yeah. And um, it sometimes it can be like that for even, I mean, I've gone back and forth. Like, should I even be doing this? Like, 
you know, like, right. is this what I want to do? And is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And, um, cause there are so many, you know, like for me, like, I kind of like, I, I was talking to somebody not too long ago and I said, I really feel like I'm an artist who like heals on the side. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know what I mean because like, yeah. that creative energy I wanted to ask you about that you know how do your creative energy I know you're talking about writing and the dream I've just been that. tapping back into all the things I loved um I I did ballet as a young girl and I want to oh. get back to that that's beautiful I've been told in class in house um I used to I'm really tapping into a lot of my um inner child um abilities uh the things i enjoy that kind of felt like they were taken from me i want to start back painting i was a really really good abstract painter um just things like that um so in conjunction with writing i want to start back painting and, and just doing art I'm, I'm obsessed with handcrafted things so i want to start making like herbal soaps and yoni steams and i've inquired um a, to a holistic school that we have here in, in florida yeah um, to become a master herbalist and I just want to tap into what I love this is now the time awesome. um, I'm just not settling anymore so I really am tapping into every little thing that interests me whatever I want to do I'm not limiting myself um, I can envision myself in five years having a crystal shop and all of these amazing things that I want to do that I know I will do so my creativity where at one point was being suffocated is now heightened it's like it's burst out and it's like we're here and everyone's got a step too because I'm not stopping. Like I'm just ready. I'm throwing things out there. Even with what I post online now, um, I I went through the space post online. I didn't really use my media, but now I use that media to engage and connect and educate. So you see, I've been posting like a lot of stuff, and I just like for people to see that because you never know who needs to see it. For one. Yeah. And for two, someone's always being inspired, always. And so I'm okay with that, even if only just one person finds it, you know, inspiring for what I'm doing. But yeah, my creative abilities were at one point, I knew what I loved. I knew what I wanted to do. I didn't believe in myself. Now they're just, they're, we're here. They're out and they're, they're flowing. I'm finding things that I never even imagined I'd like that I like now. So yeah, my creative abilities. I'm tapping into and that's really the like the car to get into to get on the road to finding your mission mm -hmm. is through your creative passions and what drives you to create it doesn't matter what it is if it's a smoothie that you're creating that looks freaking amazing by the way that thing was so <laughs> good I, was like, I got so many compliments on that smoothie I'm like smoothies are life it's so good <laughs> But if you're creating a smoothie or an amazing meal that you're sharing with somebody or a painting or whatever that you're, you know, or whatever that it might be, that's creating, you know, that whole, like, key, the key is to create, that dry, that energy that flows in you, that should just, that's how when you're in that moment of zero point time kind of falls away and you're lost in that in those spaces and time of creating is when your heart chakra and your solar plexus and your throat chakra and your third eye and your crown is all like jive everything's just going and you're tapped in and they can talk to you and you can talk when i say they just like it could be your higher self your angels or whatever yeah. But you're flowing, you know, you're, you're in that space because that's truly like, besides sleep or sex, it's, it's creating, yeah. um, with your, with your passionate, creative energy, this whole new thing, this whole right. new set of, of circumstances that you're putting out into, and you're right. If you acquire one person with that energy, it just keeps going and going. And that's what feels so good. That's what drives us. That's that passion. Yeah. You know, and we can have a whole bunch, like I have a whole bunch of, sometimes it's like, okay, what am I doing? And sometimes I have to, I do, I check in with my, with my guides. I'm like, okay, so where am I focusing my energy today with like, right. where am I going to be? Am I going to be creatively writing? Am I going to be channeling? Am I going to be with my, you know, hands or, you know, elbow deep in, in soil and working with my, you know, plants, am I going to be whatever, you know, it doesn't matter as long as there's something there. I, I feel that I'm 
I'm doing. And so dishes will sit for days and days and days and days and days and days. And I won't vacuum for days and days because my, my set of priorities, like it totally shifted. Like <laughs> I've been making myself wash the dishes and I used yeah. to be the opposite. Like I repotted all of my plants and I nurtured them and got them some sun and I've just kind of like, it's like the certain things I'm like, I don't care about right now. Yeah. But then it gets to a point like you need to do it. Like the yeah. dishes. It's funny you say that because I have been forcing myself to wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. And it's usually not even that many. It's just like, oh, but I, I just would rather do something else right now. Like be creative. Yeah. I'm like obsessed with this right now. I just want to create. I know. All I want to do. I know. So we have these like, and then we just have to be like, okay, like that's like, that to me is almost like another hard thing is in my own space, managing my space and my time and where my energy goes and all that is part of it too. But back to the whole like new you, it's something to really, I think, drive home for people. Cause, and I write it in my website. You probably read it where I'm like, mm -hmm. you need to be like, no, I'm like telling you flat out. There's a new, be ready. Need, be ready for it. If you just, you know, you're going to get more aligned spiritually with your own authentic self, with your soul, with your spirit tribe. And because of that, it's going to permeate out into the whole world that you, anybody and everybody that you've known that you've associated with from this moment forward it's going to be it's going to be different you're going to relate to them different you're going to see your circumstances differently you're going to feel differently you're going to react differently you're everything you're going to sleep differently dream differently create differently yeah, everything's, everything's going to be different <laughs> and a lot of Nothing that is, is the same it's really there's and there really isn't a bad like i say there isn't a bad side effect it really isn't but you still have to like have the helmet on and the seatbelt on because you will get thrown a lot of codes you will see a lot of synchronicities you will you know have see your body do new things and have new abilities and all of these things and you know there's no schedule for it there's no this is how it's happening and you're getting a little itinerary of how it's all gonna work for you <laughs> right. wow wouldn't that be great <laughs> but <it's true. laughs> It's like being, it's like being on a ride at like Magic Mountain or Disneyland where you don't know the theme, you don't know how long it is, you don't know who's on the ride or if it's light or if it's dark or if it's colored or if it's wet or if it's cold or if it's hot or if you're free falling or if it's, it's one of those, you, you have no idea what this ride is about, but you're going and if you could do that um, in that space of just kind of enjoying the free fall kind of thing because so many of us are like we don't like that feeling that right. out of control we don't know what we're doing or where we're going or what's happening feeling when I like don't like have all my ducks in a row and know where everything is has been and is coming from and you can't live these two lives yeah you can't you can't and those, like, that life you makes can't you in the light. yeah you can't yeah you just, that you, life makes you feel very restricted, and I feel unrestricted now. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, we just get comfortable. Change freaks yeah. people out. Yeah. So it's really more just about understanding that your life will change, but it's yeah. only for the better. Yeah. But you have to get uncomfortable with what made you comfortable, because usually yeah. what makes us comfortable keeps us stuck, keeps yeah. us placing in one spot, and that's not what growth is about. So I agree. Like you just got to be ready to really, truly tap into change. Change is such a beautiful thing. It's and actually mind boggling. When, yeah. And when you're on an awakening trajectory, when you're a light body, light worker person, change is a, is a more constant in your life than it is when you didn't live that life or for the person who doesn't have that life. Um, because you're, you're constantly on this like trajectory where more is always supposed to be coming at you. You know, like there really isn't a plateau for a light body person. There, mm -hmm. there, there isn't for anybody. Okay. Let, I, I want to say that, but when it comes to like the awakening as a service to others person, 
be, we're just, there's this constant evolution to that. We just have to know. And, and I think that, that if you look at the people who came before us, you can see, and maybe are no longer with us, but you can see how there was this constant, like, growing and learning part to their teaching, too. And their journeys too. Like there's never a time. Like I said, we're always going to be human. We're always going to feel human. We're always going to be like do, doing and dealing with this stuff. It's just always going to like we we think like oh this might like I guess not too long ago I was just like I get tired of hearing myself say how intense it is because <laughs> you know seriously like, everything is intense. Really intense this week or this month or whatever. <laughs> I feel like it's just like it's just a broken record. I really, really do. I don't know how else to say it, but it's like intense. I'm saying it again, but it's like every time it feels like it has a whole new meaning, a whole new thing, and it's really intense today isn't what was really intense back in May or January or February. It's on a whole other level. Like today, I wake up at 2.22. I'm still awake at 33.33. By the time it reaches 4.44, I've decided I'm up, things are going, and I'm like, and then there's 5.05 and 5.00. I mean, it's just like all day long, you know, and there's like things going on, and, and all that's meaning is like things are coming into alignment and into play, and um, the change that I wasn't ready for then I am now and everything does happen in its time and for a reason and blah 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 like we we're talking about we don't know what's out there but the part that's really cool that we didn't have before I know I didn't in many points in my life I, I mean I was really kind of hoping I would be dead by 55 and I didn't have a whole lot more to that because I was in a miserable life barely surviving and hating every moment of it pretty much you know, but now it's like, oh, I'm so like, who knows where I'm going to see and where I'm going to go and what I'm going to experience and who I'm going to meet and, and who other people that are similar to me, but different. We can help each other, like all that stuff. You know, it's like I do this, um, obviously to make people feel better. You know, I, whatever it is, if it's just a perfectly healthy, nobody has a, a whatever, one of their, you know, like most people I talk to, they do have a one thing. But even if you don't, it's like just to get, just to clear people out, make them, you know, have them feel better and stuff like that. But then it's like from that, it's about getting them to a space where they're in that car where they didn't even know there was a car that they could get yeah. to and, right. and get to their, you know, space. You know what I mean? Where there's so many of us that are like, lost and giving up and and just feel so alone and and that is to me like I want to not only help people but help bring people to a place like where they can come together where it's like kind of a hub for people to even like a, a directory a registry like I'm Nicole I live in Florida these are my abilities this is what I yeah. do da, 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 da. I can right. myself, I consider myself like for me it would be I'm infinity Vanessa earth mama I live in Crestline California I am a, a you know if you want to go there like a an angelic mystic I've lived you know you see you can kind of identify yourself and what your interests are and then I think as we do that because then you know, I'll meet someone that's five miles away from me that I didn't know existed that's you know right so I've had that vision too where then we're really popping off each other in a big way it's just not just me kind of here and me kind of you know I know that with each person just like getting you online you're just right. going to blow up your area and more people are going to come to you like they're already doing and you're going to yeah. see other people and it's just going to, and we're in these different places. And what's so amazing was like, when I was like, oh, wow, like, what am I, like, how's that going to work? Like I was, I had to be told I can do what I do remotely, you know? And I was like, how's that? And then it was really cool. Cause it just, they showed me this vision of, I mean, I, I'm not the only healer that's remotely. A lot of healers work remotely. But 
for us to be able to be in one spot and and through technology we just never had before we can you know reach across so much space and yeah. i here can you know help activate you there like it's so freaking awesome yeah you know it it's so Amazing. cool and and then you're there and then you're just gonna and then the more we do that but i do i have and if you think of anything or whatever i'm just it hasn't even it's it's been a vision and an idea about this whole like um registering or or whatever kind of thing um because we are so much more powerful in in numbers together. yeah i believe that too you i know? do and this is the time for us to come together more, to unite, to help each other out, to just clickety click, 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 you know? It's just like one of those. And I know there's a lot of forums out there and stuff, but I haven't heard of anything that's like quite like that, where you literally like a database of light workers and you can like find people near you and you can put out like a call, like, you know, whatever, you know, like something, yeah. something like that, no. like once that, and I want it to be creative based and art based and people to talk about, you know, cause we're all artists, people and, um, what, you know, our talents and abilities are and how to help cultivate those things. And that's the other part of it too. And we're all healers in a certain way. Some people sing and that they're sound healers. Some people, <laughs> That's funny you say that. I we didn't get to talk about that, but I sing. Yeah, I and I I said that I wanted to incorporate that somehow in healing. Yeah, you know, imagine just laying on a bed or just laying down and relaxing, and I get you into a deep meditative state by using my angelic voice. And see, my family wanted me to be um, like this professional singer, and I just wow. never never wanted to do that. I didn't want to be in that definitely didn't want to be in the right wood life at all because i yes. understand that stuff but it's funny you say that because you're in my brain that's <laughs> something that i could imagine too like the, the right. options are endless yeah and like you said when we come together we're much stronger oh, we yeah. are much stronger Absolutely. we cultivate when we're together you know you can only do so much you've got you've got a lot to hold on your shoulders so imagine just a a, a, a team of us all coming together to with the same intentions yes a lot of these things would go away yeah a lot of there's, these... there's a thing where um did you happen to watch the uh the lionsgate um your video out? yeah yes i did watch your video you did okay so um uh, wasn't that trippy how i like yeah. <laughs> i watched all of your videos Oh my god. I think god. I like stalked your page for like three days and yeah, then I messaged you finally. <laughs> no, you know what? Um no, that was so like I thought and that happens sometimes. I'll just be like, okay, this is what we're doing, and then it'll be like, nope, this is what we're doing, or we'll just take away. That is the first time I've ever like been on video and had like that kind of takeover thing. And yeah. going back and watching it was really kind of weird too because i mean i'm totally and present but yeah it's not me it's not mm -hmm. coming from me it even sounds yeah. different but it's just totally different it's so weird but anyway in that um in that reading it was just all about cooperation and not competition and mm -hmm. you know that whole we're not doing things as entrepreneurs alone. I have my healing business and this is, you know, like the chiropractors of yesteryear, you know right. what I mean? Like those were the healers who were like, okay, I'm my own healer, you know, kind of thing. And I have my own, you know, maybe they got together a couple of them, but you know what I mean now it's like, okay, I'm a healer, but we're, we're seeking each other out. We're want, we're knowing that we know that there's other innately it's like just the walkie-talkie getting online for um, that connection to each other and right. then discovering each other and how we can help each other and what that means and uh, in our journeys. You know, I'm, I am so completely wholeheartedly uh, on board and 
and in like I, and in the no I can't even like talk about it's like ugh, about just knowing this this like global community this uprising literally this uprising of light bodies like we're just coming online so hardcore yeah. now and that there is just going to be this like major like we've arrived kind of thing and like then it's just going to be about like getting organized more than yeah. you know just organizing ourselves with each other and what are we doing and how are we you know helping humanity and the environment and animals like everybody has their own life this is what i do and this is what i did in my matrix life so this is my um experience and this is what i can apply it into my mission life if you want to put it that way and then yeah. this is how i could be of service to other people so people can, you know have other abilities or other experiences or done whatever and still extrapolate from that in their mate in their non-matrix life and help other people sometimes too so that's like something that just go um such a big theme that keeps coming to me uh that i'm supposed to keep you know telling other people too is just hold on you know it's it's coming now, i'm telling myself you know i told you about like how on the new moon i'm like okay i'm ready because <laughs> i've been alone too essentially i mean i've kind of reached out here and there but i don't have my tribe you know um and it's like no we 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 do this when we're ready we're ready when we're ready and then it gets just kind of like the way we we perceive our place in that future and um for me it's just uh i baby steps is identifying more empaths you know getting yeah getting the, the empaths online and um, hearing how you've been feeling these last few days compared to how you did feel and being a part of that just is, I can't even tell you, I was walking on cloud nine after our healing the other day and every single day since then I've been more at peace. I've been more like feeling the the validation and the reassuredness and the motivation and the um the excitement you know your excitement excites <laughs> me <laughs> to, to, to i was so excited to talk to you today just you know because it's like when we when we talked the first time it was like and i told you i'm like i know you're gonna feel better i know yeah. you are and it was like i just I, can't wait. I was like i just can't wait to see what that you know that metamorphosis that that but butterfly just bursting like i told you i said i just see you just oh, just explode <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I want that. you're like, I want that so bad. I'm like, yeah. oh, I was like, you will. I'm like, I promise you that. I promise you that. And it looks like I delivered on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it literally only gets better from here. This is literally like what, just day four. I can I only imagine looking back like 30 days from now and months from now. And I'm like, yeah this was the start of, of something beautiful. So yes, once again, I thank you. Oh, you're I thank really you do. so much. I thank you again for trusting me, for oh. following your guides to, 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 you know, to go out there on that ledge. I know that it's, I know that you've been out there looking and, and following and knowing yeah. that you've had to do this because you've been to other people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so I, it's, I think it's so great that, I mean, I literally, just really came online you're you know in this way um like full force you know it's been a journey for me because i couldn't do it a little bit either you know i had to be all in what i do and um that's all happened in its own time as well so but but to uh to be a part of this chapter for you is just so gratifying and rewarding and um 
I honestly can't wait to see how it, you know, and I know you do, you know, you do too, but for me, it's just like, oh my God, you're just, yeah, maybe, you know, you can, you will paint and you will sing and, you know, I will. that'll be, you know, th these will be things that you can, you know, do and incorporate and you'll figure all these things out and, right. you know, I'm here for you no matter what. And, um, I, I know at some point here, we will be in the same room. We will. <laughs> you know, I've kind of already had visions that I would come see you. Oh, I don't know okay. when, but I've had those visions. Like I just, we're going to get together. We oh, have yeah, to. For sure. And we're going to, we're going to go crazy. We're going to have so much fun. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'll go terrorize the rock shop. <laughs> <laughs> They're not ready for the both of us. I know. Right? They are yeah. not <laughs> and I'll just be like, oh, you brought another. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she's just as intense as I am. <laughs> there is, there, there, there. I don't want you to come. You'll just, you know, you'll have to bring, I don't know, suitcases to take your Christmas back. Because, Literally, I, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I think we've, <laughs> we could probably talk for another however many hours, but <laughs> yeah. I think we've covered a lot. Yeah. I thank you so much for doing this. It was really good to um, follow up with you about how it all felt. And oh, one thing we didn't talk about just real quick is when we, after we did the, the specific one area, uh -huh. you worked on that and you, you talked about that so beautifully and vividly how you just saw it like at all of our hands and you're part of that. Yeah. You, you really were. You really, really were, and um, it just go away, and I felt it, we all felt it, you know, it's just the energy just was gone, mm -hmm. took all of that, it felt amazing. Um, oh, when you are in the, the different stages, now, for me, when I know that your energies are shifting, I get, like, flashes of light, Mm -hmm. like behind my like as though lights coming off in real life you know what I mean did, did you yes. feel that I got really bright white lights okay yeah so I'm not sure if you noticed about opening my eyes at some point like at one so, point I was, my eyes are pretty much closed the entire time yeah and then yeah. I would open them like every now and then because I'm like wow that that got really bright yeah. and I had to double check because remember I closed my blinds yeah I dimmed the room down I'm like wait for a second. Oh, and then all that crazy lightning and thunder started at the yes, end. Yes, that was the most insane. I was like, okay, yeah. they're acknowledging that things are changing because that was, that was a really loud, powerful. Oh thunder. my God. That, I, mean, I know you're in Florida. I'm in the mountains in California and not too long ago, we had these big, I mean, it shook everything and it felt like that's what was going on there. Like It, it never gets that bad. Like I'm in Jacksonville. Yeah. So we, our weather's kind of like in and out. Like some days it's like 99 degrees and then an hour later it's raining and then the sun's out again. Yeah. Some days it rains all day. Some days it's hot. Like today was a perfectly hot day. Um, but like that thunderstorm, Prince, give me a second. That thunderstorm was <laughs> intense. Oh my that God. That was like it, very intense. Yeah, it, it really was. Um, at one point I was like, holy moly. I know, like my apartment was rattling. You could feel and like. So, and I told you afterwards is that the last, the, the family that I healed in Ukraine, the exact same thing happened during their healing too. Lightning, thunder at the end of it. And all I, all I get from that is like, and what I hear from that is just the environment yeah, that you're you living. Feel right? the you're healing. Really getting cleaned out. Where that's what I said that too. Intense. Mm -hmm. It's like, and I'm like, is this going to happen every time? They're like, maybe. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Just might. You should probably put that in your disclaimer. Like, of course, you would answer that way. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that should be in your disclaimer. Just yeah. might storm <laughs> really loud and intensely. <laughs> and side effect is some rain. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so anyway, I wanted to ask you at that, at the very end is what I always call even more than the healing. Cause of course I love the healing, getting rid of the thing in, the, in, in, in your body and the thing in his head and the thing in anybody's pot. I, I eat that. I love that so much. Um, but what I really love is 
that at the very end when we're infusing it with infinite love light energy. That was beautiful. So tell I me teared about up. that from your perspective. I, I teared up and I'm getting chill bumps just thinking about it, but I teared up because when you hear the words infinite love and light, you know, you can probably t take them with a grain of salt. You don't realize how powerful it yeah. truly is. Yeah. And so when we were, when you were infusing that energy in, into me, it was not something I could see. It was something I could feel. I truly felt loved. I felt supported. And I'm choking up right now because it is so beautiful. Like, just imagine, like, just something just taking everything away from you that you always thought would be you and, and filling you with something different, something you've never felt before. It's indescribable. And it's something that I was probably seeking in things and people that I received that day. And, and that's truly why I'll never be the same because yeah. And now I just want to give that off. Like, I just want to give that what I feel and the experience. I want to give that. The only way to describe it is exactly what it means. Infinite love, light energy. And it feels like something that will never go away. Even when I have those moments where I'm thinking or yeah. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Like you said, we, we still have our days. Yeah. I still think about that energy that lives within me now. And that is more important than anything else. But when you were infusing that energy, I actually, I cried. I was tearing up because I felt unconditional, pure yeah. love. And it is a love like no other. And, and I hope anybody that's watching this truly understands how powerful that so powerful. really yeah. is. Yeah. So yes, I can feel infinite love in my energy. That was the, the cherry on top. <laughs> right. Going through the, going through the chakra, yeah. like, okay, this needs to get done. Right. Focus on the problem area. Like we're we're moving through this with the, yeah. the ending, the icing on the cake, yeah. infusing that energy. Yeah. And that that's just something that's worth it, my favorite part. <laughs> because yeah. I you know, I feel it so intensely coming from your tribe, coming from your soul, coming, I get emotional because yeah. it, it's so high coming from mother, father, God, coming up from I again, she, you know, she comes in again and into yeah. it, and just all, and I use the word blast because I don't know of a better word it like that. <laughs> than it, you get blasted with no infinite love, light, energy directly now, and I, and the, and the purpose for being in your heart and not in your heart chakra is because we're going into your actual physical body with it. Yeah. So we're going through into your energy, but we're also infusing this on a cellular, I can't say the word, cellular level. Yeah. And that's when it's, when it's going through the vortex of your heart and it's pushing that light through. And I try it when I tell people, just imagine this wave of this beautiful love light energy just going yes. all through you for whatever is still lingering at the moment just kind of effervescently just replacing it going all through there covering every molecule of your being in this love feeling energy is like you said, it's I mean, there's nothing like it and i tell yeah. you it's like a soul hug and going home yeah I don't know how much to put it. It's just a beautiful thing and it forever changes you. And the idea is, is that you're ready for it and it feels good and you have that exact reaction that you want to exude that and, and send it out yeah. because it feels so good. It's like that whole, like, I'm afraid of love concept just sounds ridiculous to you now, doesn't it? Yeah, it's out. That's out the door. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Ow. a ridiculous concept. And I used to be like, I'm like guarded from love. I've got walls 50 feet thick and 100 feet high. And, you know, like so, so many people are like fearful of love. And yeah. so they, it, it literally becomes a less and less amount of that pureness in your own body. And yeah. the least, the, as that happens, that connection to your soul is 
it's more disconnected. The connection to your soul tribe, the connection to earth and nature, that's why you're just like, ah, because you can get <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't illegal, I'd go outside naked. That's how free I feel. <laughs> That's how happy I am. Like, I just, oh, that literally is, in words, don't even, like, do it justice. Yeah. But it, I know, it's, it's hard to describe it in the feeling it is. and the visualization and all that stuff, but it's important to try because it's like, oh, so many more people need to feel that. Because they need to feel it. <laughs> they really I do. recommend. It's like, it's such it. a beautiful thing, you know, and, and you're right. It's change is there. We have to be vulnerable. We have to have faith. We have to, you know, like I say on the website, it's not just deciding or saying, okay, I believe it's remembering. Mm -hmm. That's such a big part of it. You know, is that you're at this place that you that you not only buy into it or you believe in energy stuff how some people say oh I totally believe in that energy stuff and I'm like okay but you have but to really get the essence of it is to remember what you're like when I say that to people and they kind of go oh like what your soul is made out of we're just infusing more of that in there you know like just power boosting it up, you know, kind of thing. And people go, oh, that sounds amazing. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> because it is. It's like the best thing ever. And it feels so good to be a facilitator of that. Mm -hmm. Like some people ask me, like, do you get tired? Does it wear you out when you do healings? I'm like, are you kidding me? It is so beautiful and energizing yeah. and, and electrifying and it's such an experience for me that no the answer is no it does not it completely I feel like with each healing I do I heal more with each you know with I level up how could I not you know what I mean if that's all coming through me, all that light you know like how could it possibly not I mean I feel like it every time like I said I'm addicted to it I love the reaction I love the feeling I love everything about it um and when people can feel that and feel that and are transformed like you um and it is a do you feel like that like it is like a remembrance to like what that should feel like is it's like oh, it it's it? like it's a feeling that <laughs> it's like it's like it's getting it's, so I'm dark in here <laughs> it feels familiar because it's yeah. like we, we know we should feel this or maybe at one point like when we were first born, we felt it. Right. But then the world, you know, it tarnishes it. It, it toxifies yeah. it. And we get comfortable with this idea of what love feels like. And it, it's not, you couldn't even imagine. Yeah, um, and most of the time we have no idea what that, it's a don't, wrong don't. idea of what love is. It's not yeah. like attention, it's gratification, it's manipulation, it's all sorts of things, but it's not love. It really yes, is. this is like no other. This is what we were born to experience. This yeah. is our birthright, but yeah. it's more like infusing it back into yourself. Yeah. Getting That's yourself amazing. back to what you were born with. This is our birthright yeah. to feel that. And I think, like I said, we we just, we've accepted that these other yeah. ones love, we don't really know. So now that I feel that, I could never go back to that old wave of that love I could never do that ever yeah. again um, yeah. and I would be able to recognize it in other people and in situations and I would be able to say okay no that's not love right. that's not love in any way shape or form right. infinite love and light is something totally different it's on an entire different scale it's yeah. pure love it's what love should feel and be like yes. and everybody needs to experience that because this world would be a different place I know. it would be insanely different <laughs> I know I know well because like all of the, the all of those what we see and perceive is negative feelings and emotion that drive us to that separate place that separation from self and yeah. authenticity and love for ourselves like and I have it on my Instagram same place and I'll, I'll show it to you but a couple years ago when I started going through my own thing and learning what love was and what that felt like feeling it from my guides so so deeply and and just I didn't have a, a, a go-between it was just them to me and it was yeah. like wow and and it was like it was amazing and this 
you know, I'm sure you know the song, the John Legend song, um, All of Me. Oh. All of me, yeah. <laughs> so, I, from the first couple times I, I you know, because he has real emotion behind that song for his wife and, you know, really does feel that and stuff. So, so when people sing like that, it, it gets to me and I, like, get emotional. But then, in my, you know, wake, uh, <laughs> fast forward, and the song came on and I'm, like, washing dishes. I'll never forget it. I'm washing dishes in my place in Long Beach. And I start like singing and, and we're, you know, mouthing the, because I love to sing and I love music and I'm doing all that. And then my guides go, now sing it to yourself. Mm. Probably can't even get through the first couple. Oh of my God. <laughs> oh my God. I just started falling. I couldn't even. I was like, because it was like, sing it from your soul to yourself to you, the human inside you. I get emotional just thinking about it because I was like, oh my God. And if you listen to that song and you, and you, instead of thinking as a man to a woman, as a romantic relationship, if you extrapolate those circumstances from his words and just hear it and feel it as a soul to yourself, mm -hmm. it takes on a completely different meaning complete because it's my all of me loves all of you it's what it's talking right. about even in your when you're crying you think you look like crap even when you're doing this even when you're doing that i'm here for you i love you it doesn't matter like you know it's just this on and on and on in unconditional kind of feeling that a human can try to you know convey to another human but this is about soul to you like your soul highest self to you and I was just like, oh my God. So like, to me, like that was part of my own, like that was a moment for me that I was just like, oh my God, yeah, I do feel that. I feel that, that love. And and while I always thought I was pretty cool and I, <laughs> I was a nice person and I was the lovable and I could give love, I didn't have that. That I didn't, I didn't have that deep connection in that sort of way, that feeling so loved. And then it was, then it grew. It wasn't just soul to self. It was angels to me, brothers and sisters, then Jesus. Wow. Then, you know, I just grew and grew and, you know, just kind of like on and on and on and on and on. It was just like, you know, this infinite love just doesn't come from one source. It comes from every in existence and creation from every single thing in nature that's natural, beautiful energy, light that's feeling you and loving you at this moment, that's coming to you in this way, is just so utterly life changing. We can just talk about this, okay? So I think we can. <laughs> I think you're, you know, you're, the way that you express all that is just so beautiful. And um, I thank you again for, 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 you know, going there and sharing uh -huh. so openly. Um, people need to healer yourself because yeah. you know, when we share like that, you're, you're, you're backing me up in what I say. And to be honest with you, it's been really hard to get somebody that I've healed to do this. It's yeah. been, I don't know why, but, but I've had people come to me that I needed to heal, but they healed and they kind of retracted because it was very uncomfortable for them yeah. their deal you know and I me and my presence and going there and talking about it and even like you sometimes even getting somebody to write a testimony like a couple of those testimonies I'm like would you please and you know it's like months later it's like oh yeah it's like I you know kind of healed you <laughs> but yeah. it's like, okay I get that but to be able to like and I get that too and I've known and my guides have told me like you're going to get to a point where we're going to have, and I want to do another video where I'm kind of explaining more about me and who I am, but I, my guides told me, you know what, maybe Nicole would be, you know, this would be good for her and be good for you. Yeah. You know, talk about it like this and, uh, and to share. So I really thank you for, for sharing and being here for people to, yeah. to experience. And, um, and that's just, that's really meaningful and powerful to me. 
as as a facilitator of this because the more people who have these these real amazing reactions and i know everybody that will that does it will um and it'll just you know grow and i and i, I told people it's like i don't mean to sound like i know it's not like conceited or anything like that i don't even know what to say but there will be a time where people are going to really have to wait a decent amount of time for my healing yeah and not for my sake for everybody else's sake i want that to happen like really soon that means more people are coming to me you know what i mean I'm just antsy in my pants for that for so for my own development for my own growth for me to move on to the next place that i might you know be yeah. living in and being in and and working with more people i know that there's going to be you know more to that and it starts with these these golden juicy nuggets of our right. foundations together <laughs> juicy so, nuggets <laughs> juicy nuggets that make us just like, ah! it's just i don't know it's just so beautiful and um you're right your guides did guide you and and my guides did guide me and they're the same guides and yeah. They, you know, they're like doing a little happy dance, you know, all happy since we all, we got together and, and, um, I look forward to more of that, um, with you and, uh, you know, I'm always here for you. So, you know, anytime you need me and, uh, I look forward to anything else you want to share with me or you know, we could talk numbers and crystals until the end. Of yeah. The <laughs> Literally, time isn't even enough for us. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing to be able to connect in, to, to, you know, have someone so genuine and pure that that's literally just the most important thing. Uh-huh. And, you know, I don't take that for granted. And so I, you know, I thank you too. And, you know, we come together, we're just helping other people to heal. And we're also, we're instilling courage in them. It's okay if they don't want to make the video and and testify or to give a testimony, not testify. Um, Maybe it's just that they, they need to see something like this. They need to feel this energy to truly see that it's okay to talk about it. Don't be afraid of this change. It's, this is all a part of the process. Yeah. And, you know, to truly be in the moment and, and to see how you healed is a part of talking about it. So this yeah. for me is just, it's sealing the deal. Like, yeah, yeah. wow, you know, this is sealing the deal for me. And I know someone's going to watch this video and oh, they're, yeah. they're inspired and amazed and they're going to find comfort and healing yeah and be excited for yeah. it because they should be it should be an exciting process too and i know it's like people are just yeah afraid of change they don't yeah people. they're just you know kind of in that mode of despair or whatever feeling like your circumstance your circumstance i felt like that at a mm-hmm. lot of points in my life and and i just again you know to put the call out for the people who are guided to watch you and me to go to my website or to see us online in any which way form to to be inspired to know that we are out here and this is right. possible and you know i think you again you know the gratitude changes you know, back and forth here but you know to to not have one of you to you know on a video to 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 feel that for you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. for you to be that you know my first to, to sit with me after a healing and to do this to be the pioneer we're pioneers nicole yes, we are <laughs> together yes we are <laughs> we're gonna make this world like heaven on earth to the best of our ability so yeah that that's definitely i try to tell people heaven and hell is just right here it is right yeah. here. you don't have to look much further <laughs> seriously yeah um so let's just make it heaven is what, what i try to do every single day you know right. bring, bring heaven in my own life bring heaven in other people's life any which little way i can just feeds my soul so much and right. i know it does for you too i know you're the same absolutely yeah you wouldn't be here if you weren't so mm-hmm. um i love you you're i amazing. love you <laughs> you're amazing um literally your face i could just look at it all day (laughs) don't make me blush my dimple they get deeper when i smile (laughs) 
um so go take care of your babies like that yeah know. they're like whining i don't know if you can hear them but they've been yeah. whining for like 20 minutes they're, they're <laughs> i'm gonna take them on a little walk yeah they're over we, <laughs> and uh, rosie was she gave up she was like all up in my business like 40 <laughs> Okay, I guess we're not stopping. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> but we are now. We swear. We swear. We okay, promise. So, um, thank you again, and yeah. um, I hope you have a wonderful night. And I'm sure I will chat with you. Yes, we will keep in touch. It's <laughs> become a thing. <laughs> Take care. Love right. and love. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yes. <laughs>